All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, your bi weekly horror hotfix brought to you by GDQ. Uh, before I do begin, I do just want to say that one, I hope you're having a good day, and two, that AGDQ 2023 online price mission is now open from until uh, December 30th. Uh, you can go to gamesnoquick.com for more info. All right, hope you're all doing good. I think we're the last show before Thanksgiving kicks in here in the U.S., so I thought it would be a fun idea to focus on games pretty much themed around family. It's kind of a fun horror theme. A lot of games have this, but we truly get some that, I guess, truly embody this theme. And uh, what better way to open the show than by featuring an absolute classic that I think just nails what this means. Uh, we're going to be going to Resident Evil 7 with Captain Ezekiel. Let's take it away. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. What's up, everyone? I'm Captain Ezekiel, uh, and today we are running, like X said, RE7. Um, but before I go into any details about the category that we're going to be running, uh, I'm joined by a good friend and excellent runner, Niddle, on commentary. Hey, everybody. My name is Niddle. Uh, I run this game, and I also run a lot of Goosebumps. But I uh, <laughs> hope everybody's having a great day. You're in for a treat. There is nobody better in the world to show you this run than Captain Ezekiel. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. So <laughs> we're going to be I hope I can showcase that. That's a lot of pressure, but we're going to we're going to showcase off Madhouse new game and we'll start explaining it in a second. But I'll give you a quick countdown. Uh, uh, run will start in three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you. All right, guys. So if you're not familiar with uh, RE7, um, the category we're running is New Game Madhouse. Um, what that means essentially is New Game is uh, we don't use any New Game Plus items. We use only what the game gives us, a shotgun, the pistol. Basically, it's like we're just using what the game intended for a first playthrough. Madhouse being the hardest difficulty in the game. So now when you combine those two things, right, you would start to maybe assume it's kind of a difficult category um, and you would be correct. So that's what we're doing. There's a lot of weird stuff that goes on in Madhouse. There's a lot of danger. Uh, we'll be making some safety saves to make sure we don't die and kill the run. Uh, because Madhouse has this funny little feature where you only get like three auto saves between the intro of the game and uh, essentially the ending sections of the game. So uh, dying is not fun. <laughs> and that's that's for sure. But um, yeah. And if you're not familiar with RE7 at all, this is Mia. And Niddle knows how much I love this character. Absolute oh, yeah. favorite. Biggest fan right here. Uh, yeah, this is this is our wife, Mia. Um, and basically, we're, we're playing the role of Ethan Winters. And we're going to get a message from our wife saying, Hey, uh, I need you to come get me, but also simultaneously stay away. And uh, Ethan Winters, being the absolute Chad that he is, uh, is going to head down to Dolby, Louisiana, which is uh, not a real place. Uh, Louisiana is. Dolby specifically is not. Um, and uh, he's going to go on the hunt for his wife. And that's that's basically the, the summary of, of RE7 in a nutshell. Uh, and we're going to meet a whole cast of characters. Uh, a, a veritable family, if you will. Yeah, very, very nice group of people known as the Bakers. And we love these guys. And, you know, Ekdysis uh, was correct in saying this game is a very good example of family because that's the whole premise of the game is that uh there's family and there's stuff about that family that is very not right um but we'll find out about that soon as we wait for these intro cutscene to end um we'll have patrol of ethan probably in about 10 seconds and uh we're going to start the guest house and boy do we love guest house <laughs> Guest house is best house. Um, <laughs> guest house is is inevitably the part that you end up seeing the most in the run, just because when you're resetting, uh, you you end up coming back here. So uh, you know, for a lot of people, it's kind of like, oh great, here I go through the 20 minute section to get to the main juice of the run, you know. But uh, it, it it has a lot of tech in itself, and optimizing guest house to sort of like the extreme levels that it's gotten to takes uh, a lot of work. There's a lot of very specific inputs. Uh, the timing of, of sort of everything we do is is really uh, well thought out. Um, but we're just sort of making our way to the main house now. Um, yeah, I want to see something here. <laughs> yeah, do we get daddy boost? So daddy boost is this little thing that can happen right here. Where you see Ethan slows down really, really intensely as Jack walks in front of him. If uh, we don't know the direct correlation, but the general thesis is that if your CPU usage spikes or you have like a weaker performing computer, for some reason, 
uh, Jack will let up there, and you'll be able to run instead of walk. It's like it's like it's very like out of place and jarring. It's definitely not an intended mechanic because Ethan will start sprinting, and you can save like yeah. two seconds at the start of your run if if you get that. It's pretty intense actually um, for a game like yeah. seven, but unfortunately we didn't get it. Probably like a one in a hundred thing, but I was sort of hoping the uh, you know <laughs> GDQ luck, <laughs> the Thanksgiving luck would be upon us. Yeah, um, definitely. And now we have our first uh, retry here. We do a couple of these. Nidal can feel free to explain what that does. Yeah, so uh, retries, they, they serve a couple different functions. In some cases, we'll do retries in order to uh, change our run speed back to sort of the outdoor run speed. Um, there's less retries in Madhouse, obviously, since there are less checkpoints to retry off of. Uh, the other situation where we'll do retries is if the checkpoint actually moves us ahead. Um, and you're going to see Zeke changes FPS. You're going to see a bit of this in this category. Um, we change our FPS because it essentially uh, is tied to every every sort of hitbox, hurtbox in the RE engine. So by changing our FPS, we can actually sort of uh, make Ethan a little more slippery is sort of the best way to put it, which allows us to slide past enemies. We can sort of uh, crouch through doors a little faster and not get as caught as we normally would. So there's like a little bit of slowdown. Um, sort of everything in the name of optimization with this run, like all, all these little details, they, they save, you know, maybe a second, two seconds here and there. But uh, this run has sort of gotten to that point where every second is, you know, critical. Um, <laughs> yeah, so definitely yeah, brutal in this game for sure. In optimization levels, um, the most optimized category in this game is uh, is the new game plus easy category. Which um, to put into perspective, that's an hour twenty six forty four minute run with only thirteen remaining seconds of possible time save in the run. Um, and the other categories kind of branch off similarly. Uh, and the reason this game is so optimized like that is because of its lack of RNG. Um, it doesn't have much at all. Enemies, there, in Madhouse there's a bit, there's one pretty big one in Madhouse that it's not really a time loss, it's more of like a run killer. Um, which is, you know, why Madhouse is kind of brutal already, but uh, yeah, lack of RNG is what makes the game so optimized, because it's able to get more consistent, more runs get finished as a result. Definitely. So we got our iconic bolt cutters, of course, wouldn't be an RE game without them. And uh, we're <laughs> we're waking our wife up, uh, but she's she's a little, you know, she's a little confused about about the whole situation. And uh, this is <laughs> probably everybody's least favorite part of Guest House, because we're just going to be kind of walking behind Mia for the next um, three or so minutes. So while we're doing that, it's probably a good time to explain uh, what version exactly of the game that we're running on. Um, we're, we're actually on Zero D, which is the Japanese censored version. It's sort of made for like the under 18 audience, I think. And uh, as a result, it takes out some decapitation and uh, sort of shortens a few cutscenes. So overall, over the course of the entire run, it saves about 26 seconds, uh, which is a lot. And um, we're also playing in Japanese, which I think saves something like half a second over the course of the run, which yeah. is not a lot, but, you know, every, every little millisecond sort of counts. Um, so that, that's sort of uh, the version that most people speed run on. If you're, if you're looking to learn this game, though, by all means, you do not need to have the censored version. Uh, you know, 26 seconds when you're at Zeke's level is, is sort of meaningful. But when you're, uh, you know, just learning the run and figuring out the strats and deciding if it's something that you want to run, the Steam version is, is totally fine. Yeah, there's a, there's a trap that a lot of new runners will get into where they'll kind of get stuck on Serity. Um, which you can get Serity at any point that you want. You just have to buy the game again. But like, little said, not required for anyone really it's not even required for world record in most categories um so yeah. it's not something most people really would worry about but that being said sarah d while being a different version of the game and giving us time save has its own drawbacks um that we have to account for and the biggest one is that we actually can't run too high of fps um so you'll notice that if you haven't already the graphics are very very low we do this intentionally to bump our FPS. It's very important that we have as high as FPS as we can get, as it's usually the case in most speed games on PCs. You want higher FPS. Games load faster, stuff goes quicker. In RE Engine's case, we get more hitboxes out of like melee weapons. Um, if you're familiar with Resident Evil 2 Remake, we have an axe in the guest house that operates very similarly. Um, so high frame rate, especially, especially at Madhouse, which you'll see with the Mia 1 and 2 boss fights, matters quite a lot. Um, as, uh, in my opinion, Mia 2 is the hardest boss in the whole game. And we get to fight her right at the beginning, so it's really exciting. 
But yeah, we have slam low FPS. If we were to crank our FPS really high and uncap it, right now my FPS is capped at 400. If we were to go above that, um, or even sometimes even lower than that, if it can happen, uh, the game can soft lock. Basically, audio assets will no longer load to their appropriate triggers, and the game will stop letting you progress. Very strange bug, but uh, it does happen, and it is not fun when it does. Yeah, uh, pretty much everything is tied to the audio engine also, so... Um, if, if audio assets don't load, then it won't let you progress to the next area. Uh, so we're going to stare at a wall until Mia gets taken here. Uh, there's a specific timing that you sort of do. And... Boom. There you go. Uh, I, I usually count down from the piano note. I think Zeke just waits for the scream, don't you? It's uh, it's 4.2 seconds uh, between yeah. the piano note and Mia getting abducted. I typically... I, I, like, in theory, uh, your reaction times are better, I think, to visual than they are to audio, or vice versa. I don't remember which one it is, but I just wait for the, the for the text to pop up on the screen. Going too yeah. early there is really sad because then you have to take the walk of shame back until she screams and runs away. So we just wait for the wait for the cue. Uh, so our wife, uh, she's doing just fine. Everything totally normal. Um, <laughs> just gonna give us a little chiropractor work against the wall, which actually I would, I would love that right now. Yeah. And then some acupuncture too, just for uh, dramatic effect. Yeah, absolutely. This is totally fine. We have the option to block here, um, but we don't. If you block, this this, this uh, scripted fight lasts uh, longer, and you can't die in this fight on any difficulty um, right here, because in, on easy and on normal, you go to about half HP. Uh, on easy, you stay at above 80%. On Madhouse, though, we're at one health right now. So we can't actually die um, while we wait for me to knock herself out. So when she does knock herself out, we're going to go into the bathroom next to us to grab two heals because we're on a timer. Uh, and we're going to heal ourselves back up the floor, and we're going to wake her up and trigger the Mia 1 boss fight, which I will little explain because uh, it's going to be hard for me to explain and do what I need to do. But ideally, we're going to want to kill Mia in about two or three hits. Anything more than that, it gets a little sketchy. Yeah, um, so definitely no underestimation. Mia 1 and 2 are actually some of the hardest fights in this run. Uh, just because we're operating with very limited supplies, we don't really have access to heals, we don't have weapons, obviously. Um, so we're, we're kind of just going on the axe and trying to get in, uh, like we were talking about, those high FPS hits, where we can do a single swing that ends up hitting multiple times. So. Immediately, you're going to see Zeke look to the right. He's going to pick up the axe. And the way that he approaches Mia and crouches to do the swing is very specific. Uh, we're going for three. Nice. Perfect. Um, so those were basically clipped hits. You kind of heard it. I like to call them chunky hits because you hear the axe actually like sort of, you know, it's sort of a chunky hit, you know. Um, and... Uh, Th those hits actually do an absurd amount of damage, uh, especially in the attic later. Um, but here too, that was that was a pretty good one. Yeah, three hits is pretty. It's pretty normal. That's pretty average. Um, yeah, I, I guess for me, uh, uh, typically that fight takes a very long time because Mia's really tanky. She hits really hard. Um, as you can see, we took a hit. That's usually the case. You can't usually kill her without taking at least one hit. Um, sometimes if you hit her twice and she dies, you can dodge taking that hit. Um, but it's hard to even think about getting that. Um, but yeah, Mia 1, substantially easier compared to Mia 2, but if I do it well enough, both fights will look pretty easy. But Mia 2 can go off the rails incredibly fast, because she uh, is a nightmare fight. The, the, the thing about Madhouse and RE games in general, especially the new age ones that have something called DA, um, DA is difficulty adjustment. It's essentially a, a scaling difficulty meter based on how good or how bad you're playing. That, that kind of changes throughout the game. And your difficulty sets the precedent of which one you start and end at. Madhouse being the highest of uh, ranks, so obviously, you know, higher DA makes it so that, uh, you know, you do less damage and enemies own you, basically. You get completely destroyed. <laughs> uh, thing about this, though, and not many people know this, is boss, boss health does not change through difficulty. A lot of people assume that um, everything is so much tankier. It's actually not the case. It's actually that you're doing less damage. The only caveat the only exception for some reason to this rule is mia 2. mia 2 has 200 more health than than she does on every other difficulty which she has 2000 but in that house she has 2200. it's actually a massive deal that she has that 200 health which means it's, we can't one hit her we can't kill her instantly so it makes the fight considerably harder 
Yeah, and 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 that is one of the fights that can totally just go off the rails. <laughs> and in a in a PB setting, um, you don't save or anything, so uh, dying there is is a pretty far setback. At that point, your 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 run is basically done because yeah. uh, you probably already committed maybe 20, 30 seconds to the fight, and it's just you know it's just a bad time. Yeah. Um, but that's not going to happen here, because Zeke is, is the greatest. Yeah. I'm also making a save, <laughs> so we don't, yeah, we don't no, take that gamble. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's, 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 the, that's the play that you got to do yeah. here. So there's going to be a few safety saves. Um, you'll notice that in Madhouse you have these cassette tapes. They limit the number of saves you can make, which in a casual playthrough actually does give you a little bit of pressure, because um, you know, you don't know when the next time you're going to die and get sent back 45 minutes of progress or whatever yeah, it is. it's brutal. So, the last time yeah. I did Madhouse New Game on GDQ, I died to Mia too. So we are going to hope that that doesn't happen this time. No chance. So he's lining himself up with the axe here. He's going to line himself up with the floor. He's going to crouch into Mia, go for a nice chunky hit. Dude, huge. <laughs> Absolutely huge. So that was a two hit. Um, you probably <laughs> heard that. Th those hits probably hit, I don't know, like seven or eight times each. So we're, we were doing the damage of, you know, 14 or 15 axe swings in two hits. Uh, that was insanely clean. Yeah, that was, that, that doesn't happen often. Uh, <laughs> getting a one hit on Madhouse is like incredibly rare. It's like a one in a thousand. Like you have to have like the FPS, you have to have the perfect lineup. Um, you have to pray to some deity beforehand, and that's the only time you ever get a one hit. Two hits, very hard as well, but uh, I got, I guess I had the light up there, so that's great. So that's certainly a great sign for how the rest of the run is going to go. Surely we don't walk into now the hardest area of the game, which is hallway, and we don't just get completely killed on repeat. No chance, dude. Yeah, no chance. absolutely not. A hallway is... so. Let's let's talk about the dynamic of the RE7 run just for a brief moment, a little brief intermission of, of what RE7 speedrunning is like. Um, you just do this whole intro. It's about 18 minutes it takes you to get through all of Guest House and all these cutscenes right here. The bad part about it isn't even Guest House, guys. It's actually the part that comes immediately after Guest House, which is called Hallway. Um, hallway is awful. It's just so bad, I can't even... To this day, after four years of running this game, still can't process it emotionally. <laughs> hallway has uh, a dynamic where the whole objective is you run down the hallway, you grab a key, you interact with the door, and you run away and you get away from Jack Baker. The problem is, is Jack Baker. He's right there in the middle of the hallway and we're on Madhouse. It takes two hits for Jack to put you into crit. Um, once you're in crit, and for most enemies in the game, especially key enemies like Jack, Mia, bosses, once you're in critical health where it's red and you're slow, any next hit will always put you into a death animation. You'll just die. Um, Jack does that a lot and he's very fast. So if you never played Madhouse, and you've only played like easy or normal, you're probably familiar with how Jack moves, but you're gonna see him on this difficulty. It's literally like a five times his speed. He's incredibly, incredibly fast. So hallway is gonna be a uh, amazing, hopefully. Yeah, uh, part, part of the DA is that uh, enemy movement speed is increased. So you'll see like the crawlers and the molded, they all like have a turbo. Uh, pretty much every enemy in the game has, has slightly faster animations. It's some more than others, like you can really feel it on the four-leggeds and stuff. Um, but even even Jack and Jack 3, you know, Jack in all his forms is faster. Uh, so it's a lot to deal with. Yeah. But uh, we sat down to a nice family Thanksgiving dinner and, yes. you know, just totally normal how it always goes. This is how house. mine goes, so yeah. I assume this is how your guys' goes. Um, <laughs> funny little fun fact, uh, when Jack stabs Ethan in the mouth here, he actually takes damage, and he actually takes more damage on Madhouse, so we lost 120 health because Jack poked us in the face. It's really funny that all the little uh, stab animations during cutscenes that you can't avoid, <laughs> they, they actually give you damage. Alright, now it's so, time for hallway. Yeah. Uh, slightly serious time. So the goal here is going to be to sort of aggro Jack in a way that's actually favorable and allows uh, Zeke to slip past. Um, part of that is it, it, it's to the point where we've considered tasking this because we're not sure if it's RNG. Uh, it'd be nice if we could just run a million uh, tests to see. Very nice. 
All right, so we're set up for wall skip here. Perfect, dude. Uh, all right, now the hard part starts. So we just got wall skip. Uh, that is basically a uh, <laughs> a trick that allows you to uh, break the wall early, which gives us access. Oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> which gives us access uh, to getting back through uh, the the crawl space uh, a little faster, and it also gives us a little shortcut for later. That was uh, spooky, dude. I was I was spooked. That was like perfect. That was the perfect madhouse hallway. That was like. Yeah. Nothing went wrong. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the, the spooky part is an animation Ooh. called Leg Chop. Oh, and we got Cheater Skip. Okay, so normally you have to walk to the door uh, to activate the phone, but if your FPS is high enough, uh, the phone will actually just start ringing as soon as you uh, pull yourself up. Uh, going back to Wall Skip, uh, sometimes Jack can chop off your leg, and that's basically uh, GG. Rip. Easy. Um, but Zeke avoided it perfectly. He is just too good. Yeah, to skew RNG in our favor, we're going to take a wider line and grab a heal here, just to top our health off. The whole idea of this is simply just to... The RNG in this run, like we said, RE7 has minimal RNG. Um, in Madhouse, there's an exception, and that exception is that uh, item drops are very crucial to how we are able to finish the run. Basically, what that means is we, we need... We need shotgun drops in this run. Like we need a set amount to be able to finish the run, and it doesn't really come into play until after until we're in the March section, uh, where we have a, I have a plan in the event that I don't get the drop, I'll make a save before we open some boxes to ensure that we get what we need. Um, it's pretty critical because obviously in a speed run sense, when we're actually doing attempts, you will not make those saves, and you will simply coin flip it, and your run can die 30 minutes in, 40 minutes in. Not fun, but it's what we have to do uh, to be able to get what we need. So I healed there so that I have full health going into the later parts of the game so that I don't have RNG skewed against me where it's going to give me heals instead of ammo. Uh, so that's that's why I did that. Normally we wouldn't do that in a run, uh, but in this situation I had to block a hit from Jack, so we were taking what we can get. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the ammo drops is probably one of the biggest pain points in running Madhouse New Game. Um, a lot a lot of time has been spent getting up to uh, getting up to Marge only to realize uh, that Zeke doesn't have the ammo drops that he needs. And it's it's sort of a pain point because by that point you're already what like thirty five minutes into the run. Yeah. Um, so it, it it's sort of a bummer to have to throw a run away like that. But in this case, we're gonna make a save so that way everything works out. Uh, so this is Jack 1. Um, Jack 1 is, is relatively straightforward uh, in Madhouse. Uh, th there's going to be a few things that uh, Zeke does, but for the most part, it should should be routine. We got a ghost box. Oh, we did. It was moving. Yeah. <laughs> that box is a mind of its own. Uh, so this poor deputy, he was one week away from retirement. <laughs> deputy David Anderson. He was on his way to his retirement party. Yeah. Unlucky. Uh, so you might notice his head didn't get chopped. That's part of the censorship. So Zeke's going to grab the gun. He's going to do a quick run around the garage. Uh, this is both to grab a few items that he needs and also to sort of pull Jack. Uh, Jack sort of has this whole animation that'll go through. We're going to grab the uh, car key and Zeke's going to get into the car. This is good. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's all right. It happens. That, that animation plays all the time on this yeah, version. As long as he gets into the car after that. Um, so the goal is to get him into the car. We're going to do uh, 10 slashes, I believe, and then seven shots. Uh, and that's it. That's the fight. Uh, not that bad. Um, the, the ideal is basically he gets into the car as you're getting out, except uh, he, he sort of went the wrong way. Yeah, there's, um, it, it's a small time loss. It's like three or four seconds for him to do that. Um, but you'd rather that than get hit. Because getting hit on this fight is, is unbelievably detrimental. Just for, just for knowledge's sake, so everyone's aware of the current circumstance, that, at the dinner table, we got a checkpoint. We will not get another one of those until the Lucas section. So dying without saves is just, just, just not an option. Yeah, um, yeah. Like in a, in an optimal run, right? If you didn't save and you died there, it would be like forty five minutes, right? Yeah, it's it's insane. 
Yeah. So uh, there, there's a lot, a lot of time, a lot of time between checkpoints, uh, which which is what makes I think this this category especially interesting and especially difficult. Is not only are the enemies harder and they're in uh, different spots and they sort of appear differently. Uh, you also have to deal with uh, really, really spread out checkpoints. So you probably noticed he picked up a coin. He picked up a coin earlier in the living room. Uh, we have to do that in Madhouse in order for us to get the Scorpion Key. In uh, any other difficulty, the Scorpion Key is uh, sort of just something you encounter naturally through the progression. In this, you have to pick up the coins in order to get it. And Jack's behavior is actually sort of different here. So once he buys the Scorpion Key, Jack actually is going to appear in sort of his roaming Jack form. And that's advantageous to us because we can set up for something uh, pretty, pretty nifty. Uh, this is the Madhouse Out of Bounds. It's uh, it's really tight and hard to pull off because of how fast Jack is. You probably saw him storming up the uh, storming up the steps there. So Zeke's just going to line himself up on the stairs. Jack's going to grab him and sort of just twist us out of bounds. And that was that was pretty perfect, dude. Yeah, Jack. It's actually uh, funny. Um, the Out of Bounds is tight on all categories, but it's actually significantly easier in Madhouse than it is on Easy. On Easy. It's way more convoluted. It's like you're solving the Da Vinci Code to get Jack to push you out of bounds. There are a lot more steps, yeah. Yeah, you have to you have to bait Jack with shots. So we fell back in bounds. You probably saw Zeke switch his FPS a few times. That's just to make sure that the ground below him actually loads in. Because if uh, you're falling too fast and the ground below you doesn't load in, you just kind of fall infinitely. And now we're going to do a quick detour just to make a safety save because we are coming up on some... Uh, sort of sketchy bits and uh, some, some of the molded here can do what are called cheap shots, which uh, <laughs> it's it's sort of the bane of, of this run. Uh, molded sometimes have a basically like frame perfect attack animation that they can do where you, you couldn't possibly block it in time and you couldn't, there, there's no real way to react. Uh, you can't really stun them out of it uh, for the most part. So if they're committed to doing a cheap shot, they're going to do a cheap shot. And it's kind of based on a few different factors. There, there's a timer actually on how frequently enemies can do cheap shots. So in some cases, we hope that we get cheap shotted so that uh, Molded later won't cheap shot us. Uh, you probably saw some fast crafting there. We're just making sure we have uh, about 15 normal ammo and 15 enhanced. I think the normal ammo doesn't actually matter, I was, I was told. But the enhanced ammo is sort of the important part. Um, so any any crafting you see through here is just to make sure we have the right amount of ammo. Um, there's a four-legged in this room. It can be a bit of a pain. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard him. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Zeke has to open this door, get through without this four-legged being too cheeky. There you go. All right. And if we're Lucky that didn't disrupt the RNG. We want a handgun. We need a handgun ammo drop. We got it. Thank goodness. Nice. So we can proceed with the run. <laughs> yeah. So that's the point of the safety save was. But now we're gonna do a Jack two, and uh, it does. It literally just nonstop back to back from here until Lucas. So it'll take it away. Yeah. So Jack two. Uh, <laughs> this this fight is pretty precise. Uh, Zeke's gonna be doing something called quick shots, which I haven't really talked about. Uh, you'll see him aiming. Uh, down sights uh, repeatedly. That's to uh, speed up his shots, as is implied with the name Quick Shots. He's going to do uh, four, and then once Jack staggers, he's going to do six. Then he's going to do some quick inventorying that you saw. Uh, he's going to saw Jack. Uh, he has to be careful of... Uh, never mind, he's not going to saw Jack. Sorry, he's going to go for four headshots, and then he's going to saw Jack. And uh, no quick kill, but I think that's largely impossible on Madhouse. And that is the fight. Easy. I forgot you don't saw first. I was yeah. thinking of the uh, easy strats. Yeah, uh, but yeah, house, the, yeah. It's way, way, the, way harder to do that strat. Yeah, the basic gist of that fight is uh, Zeke can't miss any shots. Uh, well, he can miss one shot, but anything above one is a big, big problem because then he's not going to have enough ammo for later and it just kind of messes up the flow of the fight. Um, Jack's AI during that fight is super aggressive, so uh, he can quickly, like, you know, get out of an animation, go into grabbing you, and then it's kind of just over from there. Um, so, you, so you know, bit of a bit of a tough fight. 
Yeah, Jack 2 no has this see. funny little mechanic where if he hits you one time, he'll immediately try to go into an execute animation on Madhouse. He does it all the time. Super not cool. Um, but we have that fight kind of planned out. You just have to be really good at your quick shooting to make sure it stays on rails. But if you mess up uh, quick shooting, it can be a problem. But that actually went very well. Um, ammo is perfectly fine right now. Uh, there's the thing we didn't mention about the game, which is actually its biggest defining feature. A lot of us agree who run the game is its inventory. You'll notice yep. I'm going into the inventory a lot and I'm making uh, moves in the inventory, setting my cursor in specific spots. All of this is because Capcom made a very good inventory with RE7, meaning that the game runs while we're in the inventory and we can pre-set up where our cursor is in the inventory and the response time of the inventory is, is frame by frame. It's incredibly responsive. Um, which means it'll be time for like, I'm moving stuff like I am right now to set up for an item pick I'm about to get right now, which will then set up for an item I'm going to use later. Every bit of movement I do in my inventory is 100% intentional, and it's to set up for not what I'm doing right now, but for what I'm probably going to do in about two to three steps. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes you inventory so fast that it's kind of hard to, to even see because it's only on the screen for like a frame. But um, yeah, the, the inventory in this is sort of perfect, but the game still runs while we're in the inventory, which means any downtime that we have where we're standing around and otherwise doing nothing, we can just go into our inventory, set up for the next thing that we're going to need, or maybe do some crafting or, you know, whatever whatever else we need. So inventory is, it, it's like almost a matter of preference. Everybody sort of learns their own way that they like to do it. But ultimately, as long as you have no downtime when you're going to like input items, then it doesn't really matter how you're doing your inventory. Mm -hmm. exactly. So we're out of the main house. We did it. Game's done. We get to go home. Yeah, GG. Easy. Um, <laughs> so uh, grabbing a repair kit, because you saw Zeke picked up a uh, shotgun. There's two shotguns that you actually get in the game. Uh, one of them is has four shots, and it's kind of terrible. Uh, this one has two shots, and it's fantastic for the most part. Um, and also, you saw that the grenade launcher is simply in the um, trailer in Madhouse, which is very good for us, given the difficulty of the game. It's yeah. nice that Capcom gave us that. <laughs> I could imagine doing Old House without it. Like, I really don't know how we would have ever done it without it. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's too crucial, but if you're not familiar with RE7 story-wise, you never played it casually, but you decided to watch it now, basically we're answering another phone call from Zoe, the daughter of Jack and Marguerite Baker, who's telling us, hey, you need to go get some stuff for me. And uh, our, she vaguely says, go get some stuff. Also, my mom might be a problem. Sorry, good luck, have fun. Zoe's helpful in some situations, but this phone call always annoyed me. She was just like, there's some stuff happening. I don't know, good luck. <laughs> yeah, and later yeah, later she's like, oh, I, you know, I'm surprised you handled my mom. And it's <laughs> like, all right, Zoe, please don't be cheeky. You could have could have given us a slightly better heads up here. So um, doing a little bit of inventory stashing just to make sure that we have room for stuff that we're going to pick up in Old House. Um, and another safety save, of course, because the next few sections can can be major pain points for sure. Um, and uh, not, not this section, but soon after, we're going to have to do our RNG gamble for uh, some good old shotgun ammo. Yeah, it's it's a reoccurring segment on my uh, stream and with my community is that we gamble every time we get to this house. We just call it the gamble house. It, you, you're really just coin flipping every time you get here. It's like, well, I'm glad we played very well at this point because it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so coming through here, just picking up some stuff, ignoring uh, our wife. She was at the door. Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Audio so still loaded, see, by the way. Great sign. Yeah, I, I was actually about to say. So uh, <laughs> you'll see the uh, the grenade launcher is really useful for these bugs. It allows us to just get through this door. Um, and yeah, in, in terms of the audio stuff, uh, we were doing a practice run the other night, and the audio got totally, totally messed up to the point where by the time Zeke was finishing the run, there, the game actually had no audio at all. There's no dialogue, no inventory sounds, no music, no nothing. Uh, but so far, so far so good. I probably just jinxed it. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but that's all right. Uh, so we hit our first RNG drop of the game, which was that trash bin I opened up a second ago. Obviously, we, we, we went back out of backpack because we picked up so many items that we're going to need the extra slots. Made another safety yeah. save. 
uh, and it's not that I'm not confident in my ability to not die. I am not confident, but that's not the point. It's more about the fact that we don't want to lose the run to no ammo, right? We don't. We want to kill the boss. So that these saves are very important. Madhouse is not a marathon-friendly innately category. It's incredibly fun to play and watch, but it is so unforgiving that like we need to make these safety saves. So that first RNG drop, it doesn't really matter what you get. Uh, handgun ammo was the drop we got, which is actually fine. We usually prefer heal or handgun. You actually don't want shotgun there. Uh, okay, I need to make sure I got that. And now this drop is important. We want it to be five shotgun. If it's not, it's not the end of the world. That's amazing. <laughs> we got right now because of those two drops, we actually have all the necessary RNG we need to get through the game. That is incredibly not normal. <laughs> yeah. <all. laughs> yeah. So the the goal is to have uh, twelve shells, I think pre-March 2. So before we get to March 2, as long as we have 12 shells, that'll work for March 2. Obviously having more is is more better. So um, yeah, pretty solid. Mm -hmm. We're still going to make a safety save before March and we're still going to check the ammo drop anyways because we're going to need it regardless. Yeah. Um, definitely. We're definitely going to run out. Like we, and even, in, even in a normal run, you wouldn't just take this and skip the ammo drops. You still need them. Um, we made a heal there, and we're gonna not use it until after we open the boxes for March 2, so that we can skew RNG in our favor. We're gonna try to get around March here, hope the bugs stay away. Um, they're chasing. I'm gonna hold space bar, because I yeah. know they're gonna hit me. Yeah. Three hits, so the bugs. Gone. Yeah, the bugs that March send out here are really hard to avoid. You, you saw... Zeke did a nice, uh, you know, flamethrower around just to pay respects, and then uh, squeeze past Marge. The, the way that she behaves, I, I don't think it's random, I think it is deterministic, but it's sort of like based on specifics of exactly where you're standing when you pass by her, and it, it's sort of out of your control, so uh, the, the backup plan is pretty solid there. Yeah, the the flame around there is to clear the bugs off that gate, up to that, up that you know, shelf, so we can get the him inside of it, and then yeah, we just hope that yeah. the bugs don't follow us out. And then if they do, not the end of the world. But now we're gonna do March one, and it'll take it away. Yep, March one, pretty straightforward. Uh, a blink, and you'll miss it. Uh, she's gonna throw us into this hole. We're gonna do a uh, flame round. Then I believe, oh God, I didn't write this down. Flame round, two shotguns and enhanced. I think it'll be a flame, a, an enhanced, two shotgun, and an enhanced. Okay, that was close. Just like that. There you go. <laughs> that fight can sometimes like, oh. end faster. There's this funny little thing in the game called shotgun spread, where the shotgun isn't like a it isn't like a slug. It's a it, it's a explosion of pellets, and it's like I believe ten pellets at eighty damage a pellet. Um, if any of those pellets miss, that's not good. <laughs> we need those. They do a lot of damage. So sometimes in that fight, you can actually just kill her with the shotgun because all of your pellets hit her. Because she has like a hundred health or something at the end of the fight, uh, after the two shot shots. Yeah, aiming down sights in this game uh, definitely makes a big difference versus just hip firing. So, sort of with all guns, but definitely mostly with the shotgun, where uh, aiming down sights can be the difference between sort of like hitting and not hitting the shots that you need. Yeah, it's, it's especially important on like, the upcoming boss site, which is, in my opinion, the coolest, most technical fight of the run. Uh, I, I think March 2 is a perfect example of like the epitome of all the mechanics that you need to know in RE7. Block canceling, uh, fast crafting, boss baiting, manipulation of the AI, a bunch of stuff like that. But we're going to do Lantern Skip. Yeah, Lantern Skip, a uh, really cool skip. We're going to look at the ceiling, and that tricks the game into thinking that we went upstairs and looked at the lantern that it wants us to look at. That uh, gives us the trigger for Marge to appear in this hole. And then uh, we're going to fall into the hole very specifically, as you saw and that triggers Marge to crawl through the hole. It's very easy to soft lock here when you're first learning this skip, but once you sort of like get the positioning down for how you have to like walk the plank, um, it's it's actually pretty pretty smooth for the most part, I say. <laughs> yeah, it's usually pretty consistent, but sometimes yeah. it has its problems. But 60% of the time, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna run over here and make a safety save before uh, we do Marge too. This safety save is probably the most out of the way because it's dipped all the way back to the trailer. Um, but not a huge deal. Yeah. Quick save. 
Uh, and now we're gonna do the March 2 boss fight. This one it requires me, like every other boss fight, to focus, but this one and Jack 3 later are especially important that I focus. So Niddle is going to explain what I do. It's all gonna go kind of fast, which is hope the idea, you know, speed run. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's not easy. So I, I'm hoping I can do it perfectly for you guys. Heads up, I can't actually see right now. So far, so good. Nice. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got disconnected for that whole fight. Oh, no. I, was, I was wondering. <laughs> I was yeah. like, he's really You're letting like, me focus on this go, one. I respect it. I gonna really leave do. it to gonna leave it to Yiddle and let him explain this while I focus, and then okay. I just go completely silent. My bad. <laughs> no worries. Looks that like it was, went smooth. It was a perfect fight. It was all good. Awesome. <laughs> Glad to hear. Yeah, the basic routine with Marge too. It's it's a it's a rinse and repeat between reloading, uh, making sure you have enough ammo, running back to the cabinet to grab ammo, and then just sort of pumping all of the ammo that you have into Marge, uh, mostly through shotgun, but sort of like switching out as as necessary uh, with the uh, flame rounds. Yeah, the whole but, uh, the whole point of that fight, fight is to basically dance Marge around. Um, and keep her in the same spot while like managing her health bar because you can't get her under half HP um, too fast or else she'll run away. The whole idea is to keep her from running away because that's like the big thing about Marge in every category is that Marge will just start running away um, if you don't do it correctly. But that one, Madhouse, is a bit tricky because you have to do a lot of weapon swapping, a lot of ammo management, but um, that's what it looks like when it's done actually perfectly, so I'm kind of happy about that. Very nice. To be fair, I, I haven't seen you mess up March 2 in a while. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favorite fights because it's all execution based. There's no randomness to it. It's all, that's the that's why the reason why I love RE7 so much, it's why I run the game so much, is that there's not much randomness to the run. It's all, it's basically just a constant skill check. You don't have to worry about a random thing like losing your run, with, obviously with the exception of, you know, ammo. Yeah, it's it's definitely nice having something where you uh, put in the frame perfect, extra, like you know, sort of uh, inputs, and the game actually takes it and doesn't doesn't eat anything or doesn't um, you know drop anything. You know, you, you can kind of like buffer everything perfectly. It's it's sort of up to you. Uh, so we're getting this arm, which is one of the ingredients that we need uh, per Zoe's recipe. And we're gonna come through here. This is gonna spawn a uh, molded right in front of us, and he's just gonna 30 FPS past this dude. No sweat. Uh, that's actually the strat on like a lot of categories. Yeah, it <laughs> only really you only really don't do it on new game easy and new game plus easy. Yeah, uh, cause just you do a you retry have the there. Ammo. Yeah, and, and on those you do a retry. Thank you for the cheap shot. That's a cheap shot in case you're wondering. As you can see, I just took a hit. I didn't get staggered or anything like that. And it's just basically unfair damage. <laughs> um, but that cheap shot's pretty consistent, so I was kind of expecting it. Uh, but yeah, on new game easy and new game plus easy, uh, you do a retry there and that dude spawns instantly and you can just shoot him and he'll die. Yeah, uh, also a good a good time to probably mention iframes are a big thing in, in this game. Uh, in Madhouse, it's not as much of a thing because enemies are moving faster, and as a result, they get out of their iframes a little bit faster. It does still come up, um, but sort of the, the routine with iframes in this game is uh, enemies can actually take damage during their iframes, but they can't die 
um, which I guess is sort of self-explanatory. But uh, there, there are situations where we'll do damage during iframes to try and get the uh, a certain thing down to one HP, so that way it's just one shot away from from killing once uh, it's out of the iframe animation. Um, the way that like iframes and sort of instinct damage works in this game is just, is a whole other beast, where enemies sort of have like two health pools, and when uh, the the instinct damage health pool drops, they they do sort of like an instinct attack. Which for Marge, it was like when she was wiggling on the floor. That's actually her instinct damage point where she can't die during that animation, but she'll s still take damage. A um, lot of lot of technical stuff, a lot of RE seven nerding going on. Uh, <laughs> Zeke's going to avoid this jump scare by going to 30 FPS and just squeezing past the molded. No problem. And we're going to head up here and collect the snake key. We're just kind of doing like the main house cleanup. Um, if you think of this game as a Metroidvania sort of thing, uh, <laughs> we're, we're sort of like unlocking the next area and then proceeding. You know, it's like when you, when you finally get uh, the new elevator working and then you can proceed to the next area. So, you know, <laughs> Um, the, the developers did have sort of like a Metroidvania feel in mind when they were developing the game. Sort of that like linear progression and then you unlock the next area and then you're in an unfamiliar place again. Yeah, the, um, there's definitely a lot of cleaning up that we have to do. We also have to in instigate a trigger um, or else the game will soft lock because of the out of bounds earlier. Those are, we have actually three potential out of bounds that can be done in the game. Only one of them is relevant, which is the one that we did earlier here in the main house with Jack. Um, the problem with it is the game is so incredibly trigger heavy that we have to, we still have to do this clock puzzle here, but we don't have to go back down into the basement. Um, it's just because if we don't, the TV actually won't work um, and we can't progress the Lucas section. Um, ultimately still saves over 30 seconds of time to do that out of bounds. Out of a lot of people who've never seen it, probably think it would save a lot more, but it doesn't. It actually only saves about 30 seconds. Yeah, um, a lot of people sort of uh, will try and learn the out-of-bounds first when they start learning the run, because it, to be fair, it is sort of the most flashy thing, you know, it's like the party trick of the run. Um, but uh, in, in the beginning, it's it's probably not worth it if you're just kind of like learning the route and stuff. Once once you need the time save and once you want to implement it in your run, then it's something you want to learn. But um, for the most part, you know, you can go at your own pace. It's a very modular run if you're looking to learn something where you can like go on your own and you know you can sort of route it yourself and you'll come to the same natural conclusions and sort of figure things out on your own so it's it's i can recommend it strongly um so we got both key cards we're heading off to the lucas section gonna do a quick run through the courtyard hopefully no grief hopefully i'm really hopeful <laughs> like very hopeful i'm gonna have to use yeah, enhanced so I... ammo due to the, like the tightness of my shotgun ammo here so i have to hit two kind of Kind of gamer shots on these guys. They have really <laughs> small heads. Uh, I just hope they don't kill me. We're gonna do the. This is going to go off the rails pretty fast. We're gonna despawn them. Good call. Yeah, th those guys can sort of like turbo, and then also they are really annoying to hit um, because they're so fast and and their hit heads are really small. We were very close to going back to March <laughs> just now. Yeah. That, that would have been kind of brutal. That was close to being very sad, but we're okay. We made it. Checkpoint safe. Yeah, we made it we're to good. the next checkpoint. Um, and uh, the Lucas section, Lucas TV, all a bunch of fun stuff. Um, little fun fact, there exists a skip called TV Skip um, that is legendary, that, is, that doesn't exist. So it's just, it's not real, but there are clips <laughs> of it. Um, where essentially a couple people who first ran the game sat down here in the chair and the TV just exploded. The TV just detonated and they were able to skip the cutscene. Absolutely insanity. We can't figure out how to replicate it, but it does, it has happened. It's on video. It, it's a massive time save that we wish we had consistently, uh, but we don't have it at all. Yeah, uh, this, this cutscene's about three minutes um, and it's... <laughs> Uh, a bit, a bit annoying to have to sit through. I mean, it is a good. It, there, there's a few good like bathroom breaks during this run, where um, you, you know you actually have like two minutes to get up, stretch, get a snack, go to the bathroom, whatever. Um, <laughs> and this is definitely one of them. But finding some way to consistently do TV skip would be sort of beautiful. Um, 
it, I, I don't think it exists, though. I think it has to do, you know, maybe like the disc was scratched or something, yeah. <laughs> something of that nature where, you know, we're not going to be able to reliably recreate it. Maybe like the cat sneezed on the hard drive. I don't know. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's like a lot of different theories. Uh, I recently had the pleasure of learning a lot about how this game works, like its inner functions, how this TV actually works. This TV is actually the most unique cutscene in the game because it, it's actually a phone call. That's what people don't know is that this is basically a phone call. It operates exactly like the phone calls. Uh, whereas there's audio playing and you're forced into an animation. There's no video being played here. Um, the game basically thinks that Ethan is supposed to be doing a videotape right now, which is like, you know, like the happy birthday videotape, the Dolby uh, alligator uh, or crocodile, whatever it is. Um, th that uh, tape basically thinks what Ethan is supposed to be doing. That's why this is actually a, a phone call, but it's considered a movie. Um, and it has like a, an exception where you can, you can you can skip it and break it like a movie would. It's, it's kind of interesting, but um, also not interesting at the same time because he, he just talks for so long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, heading through here, uh, we're going to go through what is uh, colloquially known as the Boom Boom Room. And uh, you're going to see Zeke just shooting some bombs, uh, narrowly dodging other bombs. Uh, the goal here is just to not get blowed up, obviously. Um, in Madhouse, a bomb, I think, I don't, I don't know how close it puts you to death, but I think a single bomb basically puts you at critical, where you're going to be walking slow and not having a good time. This one's going to be kind of, I have to block a bomb, so we're going to see how this goes. Yeah. All right, we're not critical. Yeah, <laughs> nice. But yeah, the, the fortunate thing I should mention, uh, Ethan blocking negates something like 60% of the damage done from uh, any damage source, which includes bombs. So Ethan can just sort of block the remote bombs with his hands. The issue comes from walking through one that we thought we shot or, or something like that going too fast. But Zeke's too good for that. <laughs> we're gonna do some very important menuing here. Yeah, the order of this is actually very specific. Um, so we're gonna need to put away all of our stuff when we go into the uh, sort of Lucas puzzle section. And uh, we're gonna need to pull a bunch of stuff out once we're out of it, obviously. So we want it to be set up in a way that everything is lined up exactly where we want it, where the, uh, the crank that we're gonna need later is in the right spot. And uh, sort of, it's not even about the right spot, just the predictable spot. So as long as Zeke is consistent with this, uh, which he definitely is, then it should it should be fine. This part's a little scary because there's a crawler right behind me. Yeah, that's him right there. <laughs> yeah, he's a little he's so, a little spooky. Yeah, worth mentioning. Going through most doors uh, actually despawns enemies. So like as soon as you're in another what's considered like a map area to the game it'll despawn any uh, enemies in, in the area. We use that a few times in Madhouse. We actually use it, I think, once in Easy. And, um, it, you know, that's a, that's a good trick for your casual Madhouse playthrough. If you're having a rough time, just, like, back up, go through a door, and watch them fall through the floor. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, and now we get to do the double fat molded fight, which uh, is actually a pretty simple fight. Probably, like, the most simple of the run, but it has a little bit of, like, toxicness to it with one of the fat molded loves to just like put his lambrafitis on and sprint out of this so they hope he stays still <laughs> yeah so the uh the play here is a neuro round four shotgun um divided evenly and then handgun and hand stable until they're dead which should just be a couple shots yep there you go and they're done skis easy batman down batman down <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna do a little bit of menuing here. We're gonna get rid of this. The one shotgun shell. Yeah. Amazing. It's fun. Yeah, what Back happened to all that ammo you picked up? Early? I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. I was really cool for like ten seconds. I was gun blazing, and then it's all gone. Yeah. Um, so we're coming up to the uh, Lucas puzzle section, and uh, as I mentioned. Lucas won't let us through until we've deposited all of our items into the item box. So, uh, just gonna come through here uh, and then deposit everything down below. And uh, we have a fun, fun little puzzle section. I'm a big fan of this like escape room sort of sort of thing. They 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 definitely do it in Village with the uh, Beneviento house, and it's just kind of a a cool little like mini game. Uh, on a casual playthrough, it's 
a good troll. Honestly. Yeah, definitely a good troll. I mean, it's a it's an escape room, and we're all big fans of escape rooms. Uh, you know, uh, I don't mean to brag, but me and Needle are one for one on escape rooms that we've done together. This is true. So yeah. we did do an escape room during SGDQ, and we owned. So no no need to brag or anything, but we're kind of big fans. Uh, also, Needle, what is that character? Oh yeah, that's the hag from RE Village. Just so you know, that there she is. She was teased in RE Seven on the water stain in the wall. There you go. He was little, the first. Little Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we have to light a candle, and uh, we're gonna use the candle to uh, burn some rope. What uh, the goal here is? There's a uh, water thing, and we have to put the candle on the cake. But the water thing keeps going off when we walk through. It's not like Ethan could cover it with his hands, or you know, like put it under his shirt or his jacket or something. No, uh, fire. We hot. have to solve this elaborate puzzle. Uh, I always forget this code. It's Lappy. Or, no, no, no. It's it's Loppy. It's Lospy. That's the one. Mm. No, no. It's it, Loozy. It's uh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's Loser. How could you forget, uh, Niddle? <laughs> I I swear every time, dude, I forget. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're gonna come through here, use the crank to turn off the water sprinklers, and then um, <laughs> head back to light the candle, and then we should be good to put it on the cake, and proceed. There's one thing we didn't mention, but it's actually a pretty uh, integral part of the run. Very important for high-level running um, is animations. Uh, Ethan has a lot of very slow animations. I'm talking like, like, like illegally slow animations where Ethan will line up to do something. If you do something not directly in front of it, like put a key item on like a crank, um, put that candle in, light that candle, a bunch of stuff like that. If you're not directly in front of the interaction, Ethan will stop and then slowly walk himself to directly on top of the interaction. Obviously a massive time loss. Uh, so a lot of what you'll see me do is like line myself up directly in front of stuff. Even though I can interact with it from further away, um, it's to skip that walking animation. Yeah, there, there are a few animations that Ethan kind of like zooms into when you interact so that it, it doesn't really matter how far close you are as long as you're sort of like doing it. Um, but yeah, there, there, there are an equal number of animations or probably more that uh, if you're too far away, Ethan will spend like six seconds lining himself up. So you saw Zeke pull all the stuff out of his uh, item box. It's perfectly lined up, totally as planned, everything good. It was, right? <laughs> yeah, everything's good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. The only... This is where it gets a little tricky. Um, as you can tell, I have one shotgun shot, and I have six enhanced bullets. That is not enough to kill the big eyed bro coming up in a minute. So we have a couple of things. There's some boxes we're going to get, and we're going to get some set drops, um, which should be fine. I should be fine on enhanced ammo. I do have to use it to kill this crawler, which, as you saw before, I'm very good at killing crawlers with a pistol. I definitely don't almost die every time. And uh, we got to kill this guy, and then we have to dodge another one or kill another one, and then go in. We're going to make a save and then break the RNG boxes, hopefully get some decent drops. Usually it's pretty forgiving here, um, but we're going to hope that uh, we get what we need before Jack 3, which I'm pretty confident we will. I missed. I'm amazing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, fortunately, the RNG isn't set uh, through saves, so you can actually make a save and sort of re-roll uh, as necessary. Okay. Nice. This guy spawned, that's really unlucky, but it's alright. Yeah, if you go fast enough through uh, that bridge section, the, the molded won't drop out of the ceiling. It's not a huge deal if he spawns, as long as he doesn't cheap shot you. And... Nope. No. <laughs> it's pretty rare for that to happen. We handgun. needed to not do this right now. <laughs> yeah, the handgun ammo doesn't work. There we go, that uh, should be fine. Three. Yeah, three's fine. Alright, cool. Oh yeah, because you pick up the box there. Nice. We needed okay, it to cool. not do that, but it went ahead and did it anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was only only one extra roll. Wasn't yeah. Too bad. That, the RNG was so skewed to get you there because I had to burn that heal after getting hit by that crawler, so everything just kind of went out of whack. Um, it's fine. Not the end of the world. That's why we made the save. Yeah. In a PB attempt, that would be. Oh, a, that'd be. I'd be so sad. <laughs> that would be a bummer. This far in, very rare for that to happen. I will say, like, other than the obvious safety strats, this this has been a super clean run. 
Yeah, um, I'm actually surprised it's actually gone like this well. Yeah. Uh, saying that before Jack 3. Probably yeah, now, now we get to do Jack 3. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Zoe crafted up a serum, and uh, picking this up is going to start the Jack 3 fight. You saw uh, Zeke, he shot a box, which, uh, just to check the drop for later, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> so. This fight is going to go pretty fast. Uh, Jack 3 has a bunch of eyeballs all over his body, and uh, Zeke is going to be shooting them in a pretty specific order. Uh, the goal is going to be to sort of uh, have every eye as low as it can go at the same time. So we're going to start off with a flame round to the face, some shotgun ammo, and enhanced the face eye. Zeke is going to stay up here and reload, and then he's going to do shotgun and pistol on the arm. Uh, Jack is going to spew in a few seconds, and that is when Zeke drops. Uh, he's going to run over and grab the ammo that he broke in those boxes. So Jack spewed, we dropped uh, two flame rounds for the belly. Uh, the flame rounds actually do damage over time, so we're doing damage the entire time that he's lit uh, on those eyes that we hit. Uh, going to go for the under tail eye, and then... Uh, throw another fire to the arm, and then a neuro round to the tail. The neuro rounds slow him down. So this is going to slow down his animations, and now it's just kind of the cleanup. He's going to go around to the rest of the eyes and go for the shotgun. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the fight. Pretty good. Uh, we still have one more section. Um, but yeah, uh, the neuro rounds, they, they slow Jack down, which you would think is detrimental in a speedrun, but it actually gives you a lot more time to get the shots that you need in. Uh, so it's kind of necessary. So another neuro round there, uh, and then just shotgun and enhance pistol, and that's it. That's the fight. Great job. I have so much pistol ammo. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, you have an absurd amount. <laughs> um, yeah, so the neuro round at the end there, Since you would it think it slows down. Like it, it does slow down Jack's death animation, but it actually doesn't matter because this door is on a timer anyway. So the door opens at the same time, regardless of if Jack's death animation is slow. And uh, we're going to inject him with the serum, which is always going to be like, what the heck? Why'd you do that? And it's, Why'd you it's do like, the thing bro. I just told you to do? <laughs> bro, what do you mean? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah. Great fight, dude. Yeah, that was, uh, I, I'm very happy. Every boss fight has gone like absolutely perfectly. Like even in guest house. So I'm, I'm very happy that every boss fight went according to plan. Um, those are usually the scariest parts. I mean, I, I don't know why I just said that. That's not even true. We're actually about to come up on the actual scariest part of the run, um, which is tape. Tape is a genuinely yeah. the hardest. I, I, we've talked about what's the hardest boss and what are the, like, the, the killers of the run. Um, a lot of the time we forget about this part because we don't make it this far. But then now we're here and we have to acknowledge the fact that we are now about to go on to the tape. Um, which is so bad. You And this is new game. We're not allowed to use new game plus items. So we are basically running around on a ship with a lot of mold that will kill you. And you don't have anything. You can't. You just have to deal with it. And yeah, it's really, really painful uh, after, you know, this beautiful cutscene. Yeah, so um, if, in case you don't know, we cure Mia because if we cure Zoe, we have to fight Mia at the end in a boss fight. Uh, we've called Mia 3. And uh, basically, we, there's like a one minute long cutscene, and then you have to do the boss fight. So overall, curing Zoe is just slower. It's kind of unfortunate, because I do feel bad for Zoe. She helped us all along the way. She got us this far, and now we're, you know, we're like, well, sorry, canon ending, and it's faster. See ya. <laughs> sorry, Zoe. I would rather save Zoe, guys. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm a big Zoe supporter. Uh, it's a very infamously a Zoe supporter. I've had run-ins with... I've, I've had the pleasure of doing a couple events with Katie O'Hagan, who is the voice actress for Mia Winters in the RE games. Um, and I commentated with her, and I've been like, you know, I would have chose Zoe, and she did not approve of me saying those things. But I still stuck to my guns in front of the voice actress herself. So, you know, you gotta commit to it. Zoe's pretty, pretty, pretty cool, because she actually helps us. Whereas Mia actual bioterrorist i don't want people to forget that guys <laughs> actual yeah that's true bio mean bad guy me is just the bad guy and we're all just kind of forgetting about it all the time but you know it's whatever but you know zoe this is canon uh zoe lives um for those who don't know actually i'll plug it right now for my for my good friend maxi loves 
who will be running the End of Zoe DLC in AGDQ 2023. Um, he will be running that DLC, which covers what happens to Zoe after this game. Um, so you should watch that. It's going to be a great run. Uh, I, I will be commentating that run. It should be a very fun time. Uh, you should definitely check that out because you get to see what happens. And you can see probably one of the best protagonists ever, which is Joe Baker. Yeah. Yeah, end of Zoe is is a wild ride. There's a lot of there's a lot of punching, a lot of gator punching, and uh, <laughs> it's a good time for sure. But yeah, cutscene coming to an end now. We're gonna be able to play as Mia. Uh, Mia, the whole Mia section. A lot of people like has a lot of mixed reviews. Like casually, it sets a really good atmosphere and it tells a lot of the story that you miss. You know, playing uh, playing the game casually, you miss like a lot of the story until it gets dumped here at the end. Um, Speed run wise, it's very slow. There are some skips that are kind of not easy, and it's 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 reset city because this is where you die. You just die all the time, especially on Madhouse. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's it's kind of you know it goes it goes with the sort of theme of RE7 where they're just sort of throwing you in in new and unfamiliar situations repeatedly, and now we get an entirely new, unfamiliar situation, and, you know, we, we felt like a boss coming out of that fight, we had so much stuff, you know, we had like 68 handgun ammo for some reason, <laughs> uh, and now now we have none of that, and we're back to sort of being stinky. Yeah, we were we were blasting, and it was felt good to be blasting, and then the game, Tom, thought, like, you know what, you get the play as Mia, we'll give you, we'll throw you a bone, you have no items until you get a really cool submachine gun and oh, we're all like geez. oh my god an automatic gun in a resident evil game surely it's not awful right like surely it does damage no it does it's not it's a pea shooter it's yeah. genuinely a pea shooter and that's like it's not even a pea shooter it's barely a paintball gun with frozen paintballs so like, it just does nothing <laughs> yeah so coming up to ship a lot of people uh really hate this section there is quite a bit of just sort of hold w but there is also a lot of optimization in it. Um, it. It's, you know, I've seen plenty of Zeke streams where he goes through ship and he's like, oh yeah, I don't think we have that much time save here, blah, blah, blah. And then he gets through and he's like, wait, six seconds? Where where did that come from? So there, <laughs> there's a lot that can like sort of go wrong or go right in this, uh, in this whole like sort of section. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is also a huge sort of split on live split that there, we don't have any any splits in between so it's always like a rng gamble you're like i don't know if i save time we'll find out in like four minutes you know <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's like playing slots but you just don't look at the machine you just kind of hope yeah <laughs> you're just kind of hoping that yeah. it's gold when you look back at it you're like nice let's go then it's red yeah. and you're confused and sad <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah that summarizes a lot of this game these two uh, twins, literally the same exact model. Reused sort of. asset number one and reused asset number two. Big fan. <laughs> Big fan of your work. Yeah. So this section, it's uh, as Zeke said, it's a it's a big lore dump. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can pick up and sort of look through as you're climbing through here. In the name of speed, we are doing absolutely none of that, um, <laughs> and uh, kind of just crawling through. Uh, in easy, there is a retry here, but obviously in Madhouse, we have like no checkpoints. So retrying pretty much anywhere other than the few spots in Guest House is just a bad idea. Um, yeah, yeah, we only had like a couple in Guest House, and I don't even think we, we only have one more retry uh, before the end of the game, which is uh, at the end of the Mia section for the Jack cutscene. It's the only one we have, I think, after. Um, otherwise, we are. We are checkpointless, but um, yeah. So this whole section, like we said, big lore dump, and the the reason why this section is so bad and why we complain about it as like being a reset point for Madhouse is because this this area is very small. There's a lot of narrow <laughs> corridors. It's actually it's all narrow corridors and also elevators. Uh, is the whole part of this run, right? As you can see, even just walking down these halls, you see they're very narrow. Uh, so now take that, right, and you now spawn like three or four molded in that hallway. Already that's a problem, even on any difficulty. And then add the fact that it's Madhouse. Everything is faster and you can get cheap shot, which means, and I'm not kidding, there is a chance we get hit once and die. And there's nothing I can do about it, right? That's sad. Uh, <laughs> and then take that, and the only defense we have is a, is a gun. Uh, that shoots bullets, I guess, and it doesn't even do anything. We have to empty a whole clip just to break a molded's leg. So we don't have very much going for us here on this section, I'm not gonna lie. 
there's a yeah. monkey that's gonna spawn right here, and I'm praying he doesn't cheap shot me. Okay, he did. Nice. Yeah, so that molded, sometimes he can, like, just spring up and go straight into the attack animation after falling through the vent. You um, can still do a lot it of here. these molded. And he did. Oh, yep, there you go. Sorry. Which is actually <laughs> not that awful. So, when we talked about cheap shots earlier, we talked about how they're on kind of like a global timer. And it's true. The cheap shots typically will not ever happen back to back unless you're standing in a group of molded, in which case they'll all just do it. Um, but now, in theory, there's no logic or science I'm going to supply for you for this. But in theory, now that we're entering tape, the first two molded should hopefully be on a, on a cooldown. They should not cheap shot us. If the first one does, not a big deal. That's actually OK. If the second one in the elevator cheap shots us, that is a very big problem. Uh, because uh, cheap shotting not only hits you, but the moldens will turn around and they'll fight you when they do it. And we actually need to get him out of the elevator in order to progress the game. Uh, so we're hoping he doesn't. Also, this is Alan. Don't get comfortable. There's a lot of... He's so pointless. <laughs> uh, yeah, Capcom actually didn't even get his name right in the in the credits. So in the in the game, like, lore, he's credited as... Uh, or, or they say his name is Alan Droney. But in the credits, they say his name is Alan Douglas. And I don't know, I don't know who Alan Douglas is, but th this is Alan Droney, and Alan Douglas just got a free credit in RE7. This is some intern at Capcom who just got credited in a game for reasons he's not really sure why. Yeah, um, yeah Alan kind of sucks. He wastes our time. Uh, we have to deal with him a little bit. We're gonna skip a phone call from Alan. Uh, in other categories, there's a second phone call that we can skip, but in Madhouse, it's just way too dangerous and sort of not worth it to do that skip. Um, this first skip is very precise. It's called uh, Vomit Skip or Alan 1 Skip. And what you're gonna see Zeke do is he's gonna run in here, and he's gonna whip to look at the vomit, and then he's gonna follow a very specific line around the chairs. And that actually skipped a 16 second phone call with uh, Alan Douglas slash Droney. <laughs> and um, yeah, and, we, and uh, during that phone call, you can't open the door or do anything. So you're just kind of stuck in that room. It's really like, it, it really just kind of hurts the ego when you mess that skip up, but uh, Zeke had no problems with it. Uh, he's gonna run into this room both to grab ammo and also to despawn the molded that was in that other room. Otherwise he'll come down this hallway and just sort of pose a problem. Uh, this is the elevator molded that Zeke talked about. And we're just gonna try and shoot him off the elevator. Perfect, dude. Nice. Ooh, thank goodness. Yes. So that guy, he can he can basically instantly uh, stand up, and he turns himself inside out almost to like <laughs> hit you from behind. It's an absurd animation, but uh, once it happens, it it puts puts you in a really tight spot. Okay. Um, so um, on that note, we're on the cycle now of a cheap shot. This guy, if he cheap shots, it's so sad. Okay, he didn't. Uh, which means that we are likely to be cheap shot by this molded right up here. If we don't, it's just really, really good luck and encounter blessings. But I'm expecting to get hit here um, because we're on the timer and he's blocking anyway. So he's going to do a long wind up, which means he's going to get a lot of time to actually hit the cheap shot. He didn't. Okay, so we're actually very nice. fortunate that, that didn't happen. Uh, which very means nice. we get to go into the next part, which is significantly harder with a lot more molded with two heals instead of just one. So we're hopefully not going to die. This is the part where I'm genuinely... Guys, I'm not even lying for the sake of like anticipation. I'm really afraid of dying here because I can't control. I've lost so many. I am not lying. So many world records to this part, just this part right here. It, I like it's you're we're, at this point. We're over an hour into the run and to lose records here is heartbreaking and it happens a lot. So we're trying not to let it happen. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna come around uh, here only only like a quarter of the way through, so we can turn around. Uh, the game sort of wants you to like walk around and look, but uh, it's it's faster to just go a quarter way and then turn around. And we're gonna come up here. This is where we could skip this phone call, or not really skip the phone call, but cut it a little short. Um, we we can't do that in Madhouse. It would involve placing a bomb on the ground and sort of like blowing it up to push us through the door. In Madhouse, any. <laughs> Any voluntary damage is just kind of like a no-no, so <laughs> we're not going to do that. And here's where the uh, sort of tight part comes in. So you're going to see Zeke come around here. He's going to place a bomb on the ground, blow it up. Um, fortunately, these bombs, they, they will hurt you if you're like right on top of them, but they otherwise you can, you can be like two inches away from it. It's totally fine. 
So uh, you'll see like him barely turn around after he places the bomb just to blow it up. And pretty good through there. Heading through, these guys can be nightmarishly difficult. Okay, now I cannot miss right. this guy. Yeah, now it's pea shooter time. Got to take out this dude's leg before he poses too much of a problem. This is not a gun. This is just not a gun. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. I feel like the gun gets progressively worse, like, every time I watch it play this. All right, good. Whew. We are actually, that is the first time, I think, in my whole life of running this game that I just went through that whole part, and I did not get touched a single time. That, yeah, that, that was perfect. <laughs> that never happens on Madhouse. I mean, we're going to get hit by this guy up here, and that's fine, but I've never gone through there without getting hit us ever. Literally ever. That was, Huge. that's insane. <laughs> World first. Yeah, for me, definitely. <laughs> Uh, but this guy, he gets a hit in no matter what. All right. As long as he doesn't chase you to the window. Yeah, which can happen. I have died yeah. in this window before. Yeah, so d even during this, like all the way up through until your feet touch the ground, basically, your your hitbox is behind the window. So if he attacks the window, uh, that, that counts. Very unfortunate, but yeah. all good. Definitely uh, and, very good, uh, and now we get to watch another cutscene, and Alan dies. Yeah. He's faking. Yeah, he's fine. He actually teaches us a very good lesson, is don't say bad words, because he says bad words about Evelyn in this cutscene, and then dies, so. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, every, everybody who says bad words about Evelyn in this game, like, sort of has to deal with Evelyn's wrath. So it's just, you know, don't say bad words about me. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a fantastic tape, dude. Yeah, that was that's definitely my cleanest tape to date, with no doubt in my mind. <laughs> that's absolutely yeah. like that tape was insane. I would never see that on a run. By the way, in case you guys are wondering, never. <laughs> so I'm glad you all got to witness it and be here with me as we made it through tape without dying. Very fun stuff. <laughs> I, I suppose I don't think we've mentioned it, but uh, who has the world record in this category? That would be me. <laughs> Who has that the world record in all the other categories? That would also be me. <laughs> <laughs> I play this game quite Sorry. a bit. Just had to say that. Yeah, if if, uh, if anybody's ever looking to run this game or learn this game themselves, I would I would definitely recommend Zeke as a like fountain, an endless fountain <laughs> of knowledge. Um, he, he plays way too much RE7. Yeah, but it's great. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun game. I do like it very much. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't play it if I didn't. Uh, but I have been playing RE7 for four years. Um, and, and yeah, shame with self-plug. I do. I did recently hit a milestone in speedrunning running this game for myself, which is I, I, I acquired uh, every world record for the main game, uh, which has never been held simultaneously by any person ever. So it's one of those uh, things where it, this was one of the categories that took me a long time to actually get because it's the hard, one of the hardest ones. But the one that was actually the hardest was Knife Only Madhouse, which just the thought of that, if it sounds awful, it is. So don't even worry about it. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's fun. But uh, obviously, you know, Niddle, also a very seasoned runner of the game. Uh, Knife Only expert uh, and new game plus runner as well. So uh, oh. if you ever have questions, you can also talk to him too. That's true. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're out of the tape. We remember everything. Evie made us remember. It's fantastic. Great. Uh, now we have to just get out of the ship. So uh, we're kind of going to be playing through the same areas that we were in. Uh, Capcom definitely likes doing this, where they sort of show you and then they, they let you do it. Um, so we're going to be uh, climbing this ladder. Nice snake eater moment. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free to start um, singing. What a thrill. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so the uh, the basic goal here is going to be uh, we just need some key items to sort of progress. So uh, most importantly, we need a chem fluid to get through a door. And uh, we're also going to uh, pick up the combat knife and fuse and just sort of unlock all the areas that uh, were locked between tape and nap. Yeah, the uh, the whole idea of the tape is to kind of teach you where everything is, what you need to do, and and since we already knew, like the, the tape that is unfortunate, we have to do that tape. It's the only tape in the game that is mandatory. Um, 
even though we know where everything is and we know what to do, it still makes us do it. Um, I also forgot that we took a cheap shot before tape, so I'm actually missing some health. So I'm gonna have to use my heal a little preemptively here, just so I don't die. Yeah. Uh, we will get another one here in a second, but I just want to make sure I go into this next part uh, without nice. getting owned. Yeah, I like that fat shot. I just recently started doing it. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Quick, quick mention, but uh, fast drops are a thing where you can kind of uh, obviously fall faster when uh, you're falling through sort of any hole or like any any you know any drop or ledge. You just need to sort of run into the ledge. Saves, again, like half a second at most, probably less, but everything in the name of optimization. Yes, sir. So we're going to grab the fuse, put down a remote bomb, just blow that dude up, no sweat. And then we are going to climb back up and make our way. Uh, we're, we're basically trying to repair the elevator. Elevator broke, and uh, it needs a fuse and a cable in order to fix, which fortunately are just kind of lying around. Yeah, you know, Mia, while not only is she a loving wife but all, and a devoted bioterrorist, she's also an elevator repair woman, so. A devoted bioterrorist. <laughs> really like a jack of all trades. <laughs> yeah, so that guy is, is no sweat. Uh, he kind of just leaps past us, so we can just push and open the door. Um, there are two dudes here. There's a uh, fat molded and a regular molded. And uh, for the most part, they they usually seem to go fine. Sometimes they control and uh, do some weird animations. Uh, if we're lucky, the fat molded will kind of just like vomit into the wall and do nothing. And the other molded will kind of just like breeze past. But... Oh, not quite, I know, guess. Yeah, a little, a little cheeky cheap shot. A little shot, bit of a love right? We might. Let's. I gotta. I gotta listen to see if he chases me. Yeah. Okay, he's not on me. We're good. Okay, cool. Yeah. The, those those fat molded. They look big, but man, can they move? Yeah, um, they're fast. <laughs> yeah, they can. They can break into a, sort of a sprint, and uh, if they if they bump you from behind, it's it's really bad. Those fat molded actually have an insta kill animation where they uh, like sort of get on top of you and just vomit and. That's it. Like, you, there's no, there's no escape from that animation. You're just dead. Yeah, there's actually two weirdly like straddle animations that like the fat molded does, and then also the normal molded do, where they kind of get on yeah. top of you and start biting you. Yeah, and and uh, especially with nothing to defend ourselves, it, they're, like I think you have the opportunity to knife them off if you have a knife, but we don't even have a knife, so not really an option here. Um. So now we're making our way back through where we were before. We have to go save Ethan. He's been entombed in a mold shish kebab, and we have to free him from the kebab. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why I've always thought of it like that. Um, the, uh, the dudes here are usually not a problem. We can just kind of push past them, even though they're like totally directly in our path. Uh, they're they're sort of too slow to get hits off. Usually, sometimes sometimes they can be a little weird. Yeah, well, everything in Madhouse can be a little weird. Yeah, that's that's basically like the the TM of of uh, Madhouse. It's like it's consistent, but things can be a little weird. Uh, there's like I say, there's like no RNG to seven, but there is a slight bit of RNG to molded behavior. Um, not that horribly uncommon to just mold a cheap shotting we could consider to be RNG because we really don't know what causes it yet. Um, and you know, molded sometimes sprinting when they shouldn't. So you know, those types of things are a little bit of RNG, but. Um, that's the end of the Mia section. Now we're in the saddest cutscene of the whole game, and it's so sad because they didn't give Jack a body, as you can tell on the wallet, just a floating head. That's why it's so sad. Uh, no body, but he does have hands, I suppose, which are cool too, but yeah, shadowed. No torso at all. They did his boots. He has, his, he has boots, but like, you you know, he, he doesn't move them, so you don't really see them. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I can see that. He has the shadow there, yeah. Um, the funny part about this cutscene, I like to point it out every time because a lot of people miss it, um, is this cutscene has a lot of like hidden little notes about it that kind of tell you more about how the game's current progress is for the story currently is. So, just so everyone's aware, Jack Baker, Zoe Baker, and Ethan are all here because they're all still alive and they are all still under the influence of the Mutamycete or Evelyn's control. The way the Mutamycete or Megamycete works is it's a hive mind. Everything kind of connects in, in the middle of it. Um, you learn a lot about that in Village, which stay tuned for after this run. You're going to watch a lot of that get explained in Shadows of Rose by Spicy. Um, 
But a lot of us, the reason that these characters are still here is because they're all still alive. Are right, you probably wondering if if they're all still connected? Why isn't Mia here? Where is Lucas? Where is March? Marge is the only Baker family member who's actually dead. That's she's represented by the lantern on the table. That was kind of like a hidden little note, like yeah, Marge is actually dead. Um, Lucas is no longer under the control of Evelyn because the connections gave him a cure to release him from the control of her. Um, but he still re retained the powers of the Mutamite uh, and Mia obviously got the injection from Ethan after Jack 3, so she's also no longer under the control. So, uh, just a little little mini lore dump. I like to nerd out about this part because it, it explains a lot about stuff that people don't quite notice when you first play through the game. Perfect. Well done, dude. Yeah, perfect timing, right? Just come out of the cutscene. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of cutscenes, imagine if there were a way to skip cutscenes in this game. Could you imagine? Well, actually, Niddle, do I have the product for you? <laughs> um, so what Niddle's referring to there is actually over the recent, very recently over the last week, and if you're ever interested in running RE7 and you just you just can't bring yourself to sit through the cutscenes, trust me, I get it. There is 20 plus minutes of them. I understand. Um, I I've worked closely with the developer over the last few days to actually make a mod that is that is being, uh, it's basically finished, that will be pushed to potentially a speedrun category. Um, that actually skips cutscenes on the Steam Uncensored version of the game. Uh, so if you're interested in stuff like that, you should join the RE7 speedrunning community, because we're talking a lot about it, um, and we will hopefully have something like that pushed for people to actually run. It takes 20 minutes out of the run in pure cutscenes alone, so uh, pretty huge um, if you're interested in running the game um, without cutscenes, because that, uh, that will soon be coming. Wow. Order now, 1999. <laughs> The shipping and handling. Five <laughs> small payments of 1999. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The cutscenes can be a big pain point for anybody learning or practicing or doing PV attempts. So the idea of a separate category that takes out the cutscenes um, is pretty sweet. And I, you know, I know a lot of people have said they're like, yeah, I want to run RE7, but the cutscenes, man. Yeah, definitely. A, a, we sympathize pretty hardcore with it. Yeah, it's like even, sure. even though I love the game, and I will probably keep running the game for a long time, as I have for the last four years, I I hate them just as much as everyone else. Um, you kind of get a little numb to them because you're like, oh, cool, bathroom break or something, or like, oh, sweet, I can eat some cheese it's now or something. But it, it it starts to be like, all right, like, come on, this is attempt number ten. I'm six hours in the stream. I just want to. I don't care about hey baby Mia. I don't care. Let me do the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's happening now? Uh, we are <laughs> we're heading to the salt mines. Um, the salt mines can can be a uh, a pretty big pain point in this run. I don't suspect Zeke will have any trouble with it tonight. But I, I do appreciate um, you saying that just to make sure there's a little added pressure of it. I do I really <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, dude. Uh, you'll you'll do great. I know you will. Um, so we're gonna come up here and grab our stuff out of the item box. Uh, there, there's a few dudes on the way to this elevator. They can sometimes be a problem. Um, it, it's sort of, it, you know, like Zeke was saying, it's, uh, we don't know if it's quite RNG or just like, uh, you know, something based on a timer or, you know, something out of our control. Maybe not RNG, but something out of our control, right? Uh, sort of determines where these dudes are gonna be and how they sort of behave. Um, this looks pretty good. This looks pretty normal. Sometimes they can be like a couple feet ahead, and so they get an early start on you, which can be a huge problem because uh, you cannot interact with the elevator if there are molded on the elevator. And molded being on the elevator is as simple as one of them being like a slight bit into the doorway. There is no like leeway with it. So, uh, yeah. I will say, for there. the record, Needle did say, this is looking pretty good, and I immediately was cheap shot. <laughs> the moment he said it. <laughs> well, now you won't get cheap shot by the dude in the hallway. Oh, I'm open. Got to run low on heels. I only got two of those bad boys left. Yeah, so uh, this this whole section, we, we now have to make a serum in order to address Eevee and sort that situation out. Oh, yeah, you're good. Um, and to do that, we're gonna have to come through the salt mines, which conveniently is like right underneath the Baker House. And uh, there's there's gonna be a bunch of molded. This is sort of like the final gauntlet section where they're like, okay, we've given you all these weapons. You picked up only three of them because you're insane. And we gave you all this ammo, and you only picked up two of the varieties because you're insane. 
So now we're going to throw all these enemies at you. Every enemy variety that you see. All three. Um. <laughs> all right. That went pretty good. Um, yeah. Now we're basically going to go make our Necrotoxin, grab a few items, destroy that box because I don't like it. Yeah, so there's uh, there's some trap boxes. Uh, nice little troll from Lucas. He, he left them all throughout the <laughs> salt mines and everywhere, which uh, is kind of like a bit of a foreshadowing to not a hero. Yeah. All right. Making the we'll necrotoxin. Grab. We're also yeah, gonna make a save. Be yeah, the last one to make. Because if we don't, we go so, all the way back to the end of the Mia section. Yeah, so, uh, the, yeah, the last checkpoint we had was, uh, technically, the last checkpoint we had was when Mia freed us from the kebab, but, uh, there was a save at, uh, before we went to the elevator, but yeah, it, like, in general, in Madhouse, when you're playing this casually and stuff, you're gonna <laughs> realize how far back the game is willing to send you, like, you know, you'll make a lot of progress, and then, you know, a molded where you never would have expected it just cheap shots you, and, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, this run has basically been nonstop ever since you got out of guest house for the most part. This this part is no exception. Um, this is not to be slept on. Very easy to die here. Uh, Salt mines is actually kind of brutal. There's a lot of molded here, and I'm setting it up in a certain way to decrease the amount of molded. But uh, Noodle can kind of take the wheel on that one. I kind of have to not miss. Yeah. Um. So the way that this works is there can only be a certain number of enemies in a given zone. The game won't let it spawn more than a certain number. So you saw he shot that first molded in the knee. Um. I, I, that doesn't kill him. Keeps him alive, and that should decrease the number of molded that spawn a little bit ahead. The basic game plan here is just kind of shotgun everything in the face. Uh, don't miss. And uh, now we got both up here. And now a uh, new strat on this fat molded, I think. Uh, we're just going to have to change him. Uh, Old strat, yeah. It's safer to shoot those two guys. And... Okay. So I'm going to get hit by this crawler. Oh, this is not good. Oh, jeez. Oh, You're good. Yeah, so uh, coming up here, there are two fat molded, and there are a bunch of bombs on, on that ladder. Um, so Zeke's going to fire a flame shot, try and clear out as many of those bombs as he can. And then he's going to stun the fat molded and head up and just sort of pray. Um, the, the fat molded, when they're stunned, they won't vomit. If they do vomit, they will knock Ethan off the ladder. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a huge bummer and it kills the <laughs> run, but no problem here. Uh, we always sort of like listen for the molded when you're climbing up that ladder because you can sort of hear them when they start their vomit uh, animation. And it's it's a very sweaty sort of tense few seconds while you're climbing up there. Yeah, it's definitely um, super spooky, especially with the newer way we're doing that, where we neuro them first and then finish off the bombs. We used to just finish off the bombs and then neuro them. It's safer but slower, but um, faster to just do it that way. Um, obviously, a little bit scarier when that happens because uh, you're on a very tight timer. Because at the very top of the ladder, as I was getting off, they started vomiting. Um, yeah. Which at that point you're you're safe, uh, but it is uh, yeah very tight, and I'm very glad that I did not die. And now we're back in guest house. You never leave. You really, it's... Yeah, you yeah. truly, yeah, this game is truly cyclical. Well, yeah, dude, it's a Metroidvania, you know? Yeah. At the end of a Metroid game, you start off, you, you go back to where you start off, except now you have all the stuff. <laughs> Point, but dude, I'm going to push this narrative until everybody's sick of it. <laughs> so it's like RE7 just gets its own tag as a Metroidvania. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're kind of replaying all of the events that happened, except now we get to see Evie directly influencing. Whoa, look at her hair, dude. Cool. Uh, we get Super to see Saiyan. her <laughs> directly influencing uh, Mia. So the whole time Mia was seeing Evie talking to her, uh, that was a funky hairstyle. I've never yeah, seen Yeah, I've that. actually never seen her have, like, the, the curl there. Like, she left the like, curling iron in too long or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, Mia is, uh, or, sorry, Evie. <laughs> Technically both. Uh, Evie is the ultimate antagonist of this game. She's been controlling everybody. She is the one behind why the Baker family went from being a, a loving, warm family to being uh, a body horror uh, nightmare mess, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she uh, she did a lot. We're going to kind of ignore everyone there. Uh, and we're, yeah. gonna, we're just going to get through to Evelyn here, block a couple blasts. Yeah, so uh, Evie does these... Uh, energy blast sort of things, which actually also happens in Shadows of Rose. 
And uh, we sort of block through that and then push through and injector. Great job. Yeah, on Madhouse, that's actually a lot easier than it is on Easy, because on Easy, you have to do a one cycle, which means you run through uh, and you take the second blast, but you try to get there fast enough to get the injection. You can't do that on Madhouse, but uh, yeah, on Madhouse, you just block twice. The caveat is on Madhouse, you'll sometimes do what's called an instant blast, where she like just does it automatically and there's nothing you can do about it. You just fall down. It's really sad. Yeah, getting knocked down loses probably about like seven or eight seconds. Um, and it also, it just hurts a lot. Yeah, not not so much for Ethan, but just yeah, emotional. Yeah, yeah like your <laughs> ego is just. You're like, at the end of the game gutter. and you just lose your run. <laughs> yeah, it's like the last the last tense moment, you know. Um, so Evie has melted into the ground and become a giant face in the wall, and uh, we're basically just gonna let her have it with everything we've got. Um, a lot of enhanced ammo shots there with with the quick shoots, the quick shots, quick shoots uh, that I <laughs> talked about. Um, and we're uh, th this sort of final section is kind of a set piece. Uh, it, for the most part, this game avoids doing like these like big blockbuster like set piece action things. But Capcom can't really help themselves, <laughs> and so this <laughs> this last part is kind of like you know you're you're almost on rails for what you have to do. There's a little bit of influence you have, but. They gotta the sneak one in, you know. They gotta get like yeah. a boulder being punched or something. They gotta get, they yeah, gotta get something. something in there. Like there's that one yeah. guy who's always at the table. Like, all right, guys, when do I get to put my cutscene in? Yeah, if, if we don't blow up a house by the end of this <laughs> game, is it really a Resident Evil? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is all an auto scroller. I'm waiting for Evie to pick me up. I'm gonna do two shots with the shotgun after she picks me up, and then she's gonna hit me a few more times, and I'll switch to my pistol and hopefully kill her with those last three shots, because it's all I have left, so let's hope it kills her. Yeah, so shotgun to the leg, and then we wait a little bit. Pistol, perfect. And we're going to remove our mouse from the desk. We're not going to allow it to move a single pixel. We just want to left click. That's all we have to do. Yeah, that's the strat here. So the, the game actually lines you up perfectly with where you need to aim. Though aiming is a lie here. The goal is to just mash and get the shots in as quickly as possible. Uh, sometimes she can block a shot with her arm. It's kind of rare. Uh, two, three, four. Perfect. Easy. And that... That's RE7 Madhouse New Game. That is well by done, far, dude. I think, the cleanest run I've ever done. <laughs> I I didn't die. Uh, and, like, uh, outside of the safety saves, every boss fight went exactly as planned. Every tight section went... Uh, tape went uh, phenomenally. I'm like, I'm so, actually so shocked that tape went as well as it did. Like, that was, that's, like, that's yeah, so it, weird. It, I, I think that would have been a gold if it weren't for, like, the safety saves around it, right? <laughs> this, this, without the safety saves, this would have been world record for sure. <laughs> Oh, and that's like, time, by the way. Yeah, time. Sorry. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, without the safety saves, that run would have uh, genuinely, likely recorded. I mean, I got a 133. Like, that's, um, GG, that's dude. a minute and a half off of current record. So, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously the Jack 3 retries played a very big part of that, too. But, um, so I can't necessarily say it would have been record, but it would have been very close. Um, yeah, that was a, I'm very happy with that run. That went very, very well. Um, I think 133.03 is a second place time anyways for this, so to do that in a marathon feels pretty good. Um, so yeah, thank you, uh, thank you GDQ and Ignitis, thank you for having me on, buddy, I appreciate it, and uh, Niddle, thank you so much for the commentary. Uh, guys, uh, Niddle is an excellent runner of this game, runs horror games, so you should check him out sometime. Uh, he's a DVD sweat lord too. Uh, great guy, good <laughs> friend, and I appreciate you coming on and commentating for me. Um, and I, I, I'm Captain Ezekiel. You can catch me at twitch.tv slash Captain underscore Ezekiel or Twitter at Captain Ezekiel. I'm, I primarily am running this game. Um, even though I recently finished the record sweep, uh, now that we're adding more categories for the cutscene skip percent, I will be grinding a lot more of Madhouse new game, um, and a lot of stuff like that. So if you like this kind of content, I do it a lot. Um, this is my, uh, my game of choice. So if you, if you like it, feel free to check me out. GG's, man. Thanks. GG's. Uh, as well, uh, just so we can uh, say, if anyone want to find your Twitch channel or anything else, uh, Captain Zeke, where can they find you? Uh, uh, Twitch.tv slash Captain underscore Ezekiel, and Twitter is at Captain Ezekiel. All right. Well, definitely GG on that one. It is wild to see uh, just how difficult the Madhouse category is, but you, you nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. Uh, for everyone else, don't you go anywhere. We're going to have more games coming up. We still have two more for you for the rest of the night. So we will be right back very quick. All right, everyone. Welcome back from the break. Hope you're all doing good and hope you enjoyed that run of Resident Evil Madhouse. It's always nice. I like to always have Resident Evil 7 roughly around the time of Thanksgiving holiday because it, it just makes sense. They have the food, they have the family. And uh, continuing on that theme, we have plenty of more exciting games for you tonight, especially following up with RE7. Uh, recently, RE Village had some new DLC, and I think this is actually going to be the debut on the GQ channel of it. I think it also got accepted into the upcoming AGQ, so it's going to be uh, really exciting just to see uh, it now and then it later. So, anyway, without further ado, uh, we're going to be going to Resident Evil Village Shadows of Rose on Hardcore featuring Spicy TV. Take it away. Thank you, Uck. Hey everyone, my name is Spicy, and uh, you know, as he said, we're going to be doing Shadows of Rose on Hardcore. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the intro started here while we talk about the story and stuff since it's a bit of a longer intro. A few cutscenes to skip here and then we'll be able to start the time. I should be up in three, two, one, go. Uh, I do have on commentary with me my fellow runner and good friend Seven Ray D. If you want to introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. As, as Spicy said, I'm Seven Ray D, and uh, I also run this game a lot. I think I'm half a second behind Spicy on the leaderboards at the moment, but yeah. <laughs> Hello, W Holding Enjoyer. Indeed. As we hold W here in the intro, we can kind of talk about. What this DLC is about and kind of the, the story continued. So if you if you were here for the previous run that uh, just finished the, the Resident Evil Seven run, that was uh, kind of the start of the winter story um, for the Resident Evil series. And this is the, this DLC was kind of intended to wrap up the winter story and pick up where it left off in Village. Uh, the main kind of goal of Rose in this what DLC is, this? is basically throughout her life she was kind of born out of the Mega My Seat in Village. Spoilers, sorry. And uh, she has magic powers, and she was bullied for her entire life for having magic powers. And uh, she was contacted by a scientist that basically said she can go into like the Mega Mycetes consciousness, sort of. I don't know. It's it's kind of weird, but she goes into the Mega Mycetes consciousness, and uh, there's a crystal in here that supposedly can get rid of her powers so she can live a more normal life. So that is our goal yeah. going into this. Yeah, the purifying crystal. How convenient. Yeah, the yeah. consciousness is, uh, it's kind of explained as sort of like anyone that dies near or with, like, within the Mega My Seat or that is under the control of the Mega My Seat, um, their, their kind of thoughts and their memories are, are shared with the Mega My Seat's consciousness. So everything that you kind of see in this DLC is uh, presumed to be, you know, someone else's memories or thoughts or something like that. This intro itself is not nothing too much is happening here. It's just a lot of straight lines and uh, avoiding bumping walls, basically. Yeah, you'll notice a lot of this DLC um, from from like a run standpoint is it's it's very consistent Wait, at this point, which is kind of what's allowed us to get it as optimized as we have. As I know Trace said in the beginning, his time is like half a second slower than mine right now on boards and that's just because like h half a second is like a decent amount in this at this point it's it's really really optimized um that just comes from a lot of it being a little more hold w and it's just really consistent with the strats that we found yeah like i think we both are like 15 seconds out of my our like best possible time with our like runs so there's like 15 seconds of time to begin the whole run that's not much so you have to play really flawlessly throughout if you're like yeah. going for the uh, world record in this category already it's kind of insane how quickly it went to this it's pretty nuts so a little bit ago uh, we just kind of met up with another version of rose that they're kind of twin of ourselves and you see here in this hole there's a bunch more of them uh, and that's kind of explained later um in like the late game the lore dump probably talk about it more then but for now, there's uh, just a bunch of rose copies. That's all you get. To... No. But yeah, this game, like uh, most other RE games, has a DA system 
it's something that most, if you play this casually you might not even know about. It's like a dynamic difficulty system of the game. Where, um, basically your the game tracks your performance by scoring how you're doing. So when you shoot and kill things, your difficulty score goes up. So we basically don't want to kill enemies if we can avoid it. And, uh, it lowers when you take damage. So you might be wondering why we're taking these hits here. It's because we're trying to lower the difficulty score specifically. Because if we keep that score under certain threshold, which is 8000 difficulty score, uh, we actually do more damage on hardcore difficulty. So we're doing a little bit of like purposeful hits. And we're also gonna do the death later on just for keeping our difficulty lower. Yeah, and if you saw, I kind of went into like a specific spot to take those two hits. And uh, the reason for that is the difficulty adjustment that we actually start on on Hardcore, if you get an actual grab, you'll go into crit, which makes you walk really slow. And we don't want that, but if you kind of stand in that certain spot where I did, you're, I guess it's because you're at a different uh, sort of elevation. He's lower than you are. It prevents the grabs from happening, and you can just take two light hits without going in crit, and it works out. Indeed, indeed. Also, another way of uh, lowering the difficulty is going to be using a heal, but you get more, you lower the difficulty score more if you're the lower health you are. So we're going to be able to later take a hit to go into danger, then heal, just to drop them DA massively. Yeah, we'll be picking up a few more safety heals too. Hopefully we won't have to use them, because we shouldn't need the DA drop from them, but... In this part, we kind of see a lot more of these molded pipe enemies. These will be the main enemies we see throughout Castle in this game. Um, they're kind of a pain, actually. Or they they were before we figured out some some like uh, manipulation for them. They used to be a huge pain because they're extremely random with the way that they work. Um, they just yeah. grab really fast sometimes. Sometimes they sleep. Sometimes they'll act like they're gonna sleep and then they'll insta grab you. Um, but yeah, you can explain the yeah. shaman up here. Yeah, so in a cutscene, uh, we were given spawned a gun, which we didn't explain how, but uh, yeah. Um, we figured out recently there is a way to manipulate all these enemies by shooting at very precise timings. So hopefully if Spicy nailed this shot timing, then we will miss that crap, and when going out, this enemy is just sleeping. We get a free pass here, you can see a lot of different pistol shot manipulations within the castle. So, and yeah. um, for the most part, they're all like consistent, but there's just like the enemy's pathing can be a bit random, so you might be get blocked a bit more sometimes and all that. But yeah, like that guy used to have to beta grab from the run around, but it just makes the enemies a lot more consistent. Um, if you also saw, there's a little tech that I did when I picked up the bolt cutters there where I kind of clicked aim as I picked it up, and uh, that just makes it pick up a little bit further, saves a tiny bit of time. Yeah, when you do that a lot in the castle, it saves time. And here we're actually going to be doing our first goop skip. Um, normally, if you just run into the goop normally, you wouldn't be able to do this little pass here. Uh, but if you like flick your mouse into it, it warps you a bit further into the goop and allows you to barely pass by here. And there's going to be another goop skip we do. This one only says like a few seconds. But if you are on 30 FPS, we drop down sideways while crouched, it like pushes us further from the drop down, and we're able to just barely skip by this goop as well. And it has like a weird property for some reason. This hole here has like a weird like a thing trying to block you for some reason when we do this skip. But you know, yeah, at least spicy got by. That ladder skip one, that, that last one we just did is pretty nerve wracking. It's very, very tight. If you kind of, there's a big kind of a wall of collision you have to go around when you drop down. And if you like mess up and turn too tight, bump the collision, you you just die. Yeah, it's like literally when you get out the coop, if you were there like less than half a second longer, you would have died. It's so that, it's just that tight. And here we actually get our first power, which gives us the ability to interact with this Chloresia, which are like linked to this mold or goop. And uh, when we clear the Chloresia, clears all the goop. And 
this opens up the castle a bit more. So up here in this room, we have a kind of a scripted enemy that busts this door down. And this is where we're going to take the last hit we were talking about that's going to put us into crit. I'm going to line myself and slide myself up in kind of a way where, again, he doesn't actually grab me and he just hits me instead. In this corner. And then once he hits me, I open my inventory and use this heal. And from that, we get a massive DA drop. Yeah, there's a lot really we haven't fi figured out any way to get past him either there, so it's just kind of, like kind of double, works out double, just he launches us, it gets out of the doorway, and uh, we get the DA drop. Here we're gonna do another pistol shot manip. And then this dude is gonna be sleeping, and just gives us a free pass here. Picking up a little safety kim food there, just in case we get grabbed again, unintentionally, because there are some parts up here that are a little bit scary. Also, a random note with the, the library I just went through. Um, the first goop skip that we did in the library, for some reason, when you do that goop skip, there's one of the molded that's supposed to spawn that just doesn't spawn if you do that. And uh, it makes the pass through the library a lot more free the second time. Yeah. I guess the main goal in the castle here, we can already see the purifying crystal on the left here. We can actually interact with it a bit here, but uh, we need to collect these masks to get access to this purifying crystal here. Um, yeah, and that crystal kind of has like a force interaction on it there. Um, so we kind of mitigate some of the time loss of interacting with the crystal by doing that sclerosia and then act like activating the crystal because you have to wait at the top of the stairs if you go instantly yeah oh this guy's being aggro he's been nice wow i can't uh, believe he idled oh, for i wow. can't believe he idled for so long there wow. yeah this is he like enemies, super uh, turboed yeah these enemies sometimes like they get like instagram twice sometimes they just sleep forever just like now and yeah that yeah, was, was kind of crazy, I got lucky. Yeah. And here we're actually gonna up, get an upgrade for our power here, which actually allows it to use against enemies. It's just like a freezing ability. Um, first of all, we're gonna have the 30 FPS past this enemy. We have a, like a limited use of the freezing power. The right, bottom right side, you can see the three white balls, I guess. and. Uh, they re represent our usage of power. And in this next room, we're gonna be freezing these two upcoming enemies, which gives us the ability to craft this key freely. And then we have the scary hallway. We have I'm actually gonna go ahead first. and make the heal early here, just in case. Yeah. So we have to dodge the first dude, and the second dude is random. And this time he was like. Scarily taunting us, but didn't that grow? I was, I was almost sure he was gonna sleep and sense to grabbing me when I tried to run by. Yeah, that specific animation, like sometimes, is very random. Like he can just interrupt it and just go for a grab randomly. So, yeah, there's another little mechanic that I'm actually gonna use up here as a kind of a safety strut. Um, but for some reason in this DLC, I think it actually applies in main game in some spots too. For some reason, if you pause or like spam pause in front of an enemy, it'll just force them to insta-grab or do like a fast grab animation. Um, so you can end up in weird spots in that hallway where the second guy you need to 30 FPS past him, he stands in a spot and like screams like he did there, like in the middle of the doorway, you need to 30 FPS past him. But then you'll try to pause to go 30 and you come out of your pause and he insta-grabs you because you paused in front of him. Yeah. Um, and then in here, we're actually gonna do a little bit of a, this is not like a, super friendly like real time wise but it's not like a marathon friendly strat i guess but we're gonna showcase it anyway so pausing here for like i guess seven seconds is the time you need to pause here um skips like a stagger animation from normally you'd be like scared from this big dude smashing one of the roses into the ground and the pausing there just avoids that whole animation for some reason who knows why yeah, just something cool to show off. This run actually has this run has a lot of sort of small like pause strats that I'm not gonna be doing for marathon purposes because they're not super RTA friendly. But for actual speedrun purposes, the timer doesn't run in the pause menu, so 
Mm, yeah. So if you like, if you normally watch this run, you'd see a lot of pausing, a lot of restarting checkpoints and all that, but they're like, yeah, not RTA friendly. And here we're entering the basement. Casually, this place can be kind of a nightmare because there's just so many enemies and can be very hard to navigate your way around here. Here we're actually going to be bringing up our first mask as well. We need three in total in the castle. Yeah, so going back, going through here the first time is pretty much free. Going back, there's a little bit of RNG on one of the enemies. Um, as I talked about the pause buffer strat to make them Instagram, I'm actually going to be doing that just to get a little bit of a safer pass on one of these guys. Yeah, in speedruns normally we would have 30 FPS and just hope this next dude would just waddle away from here, but Spice is going to force a grab out of this enemy here. As you can see, and just pause buffering and just made him grab. Yeah, it's really strange when it does that, but... Technically, you can also 30 FPS past this dude, but... Again, uh, this is just like way a bit safer, because the 30 FPS squeeze can be a bit annoying, and it's obviously a bit slower to just go menu and turn it to 30. Yeah, going 30 takes a while, because you have to go 30 and then go back, so... Yeah, that was the first of the three masks we made. Now we're going down to pick up the um, second one on the way back. Yeah, we basically cleared up the skull ratio with just holding the second mask already. But it wasn't like optimal to pick it up on the first pass because we would have to wait a bit. So now we're uh, heading back to the main part of the castle and picking up the second mask on the way. This is a small optimization, but I'm gonna. When you get these, when you pick up these masks, you have to right click out of them. And I'm gonna hold up my pipe so that when I right click out of this, I don't get an aim animation. So I stay full speed. And then here's another shot minute. Hopefully this one works. This guy's in a weird spot. I'm gonna force a grab to be safe. Yeah. This shot map. Even grab? No. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You did like a stagger grab. Yeah. Or stumble grab. This pistol shot map is the most random and definitely not the most reliable one. Um, these shot timings are like insanely tight and like if you shoot just a tiny bit earlier or later, it's just completely different result. So it's also just hard to nail it perfectly. And here we have like this painting puzzle where you have to put the prey and the hunters on the other side. Funny enough, I think most people didn't even realize this, but there's actually note behind, notes behind the paintings which tell what the animal is supposed to be opposed to another. Um, I think most people just try to figure it out by just watching and just like trying it out. But, yeah. yeah. Or if you somehow you don't know which animals yeah. they eat, I guess you could use Google or something. It's just it's just a little weird that they like put notes to tell you which it is on such a basic puzzle, but. Yeah. But now we got the Triactor key, which uh, gives us access to by far the most powerful weapon in this DLC, which is the shotgun. This weapon is pretty much going to carry us through both of the main bosses in this DLC. One of which is yeah. coming up pretty soon. Yeah. This uh, we have a little bit of a, like a fast shooting technique. I'll try to explain it a bit later soon. But uh, we're heading for the last mask here, and. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna be actually taking a forced death here. Well, no, not forced, but we're taking the death to uh, lower our difficulty here. Yeah, and uh, the scream is something. Apologies. Yeah, I apologize for this. This like drops the difficulty score insane amount, so it's it's worth to do it. And here, this room as well. Right after we skip this, um, we're gonna not do this the intended way. Normally, you're supposed to clear a bunch of scleresia, just drop a bunch of objects on the goop to be able to grab the mask, but we can actually just barely, there's like a perfect angle to pick this up, and we can just skip the whole room, and it saves like a minute and a half or something. And then yeah, we're captured. Yeah, and we're right after captured, tossed into a prison, then we have to clear up this specific scleresia. Or like given these hints on like yeah okay it's lower than a barrel and blah blah but 
Yeah, we already know which one that one's all we need to clear. Let's take yeah, a luckily, the luckily they're not RNG or anything. I know that was one of the first things that I tested after I played it the first time. As if this was random, but... Yeah. And now, we basically still were led to hold our own to our inventory. We have all the three masks and now we're just heading to go get get the purifying crystal, I guess. Um, we pick up some uh, rusted scrap here and uh, gunpowder so we can craft uh, shotgun shells. So shotgun is just the bread and butter of all boss fights here, basically. Another little shaman shop. up here that makes that guy stumble to the right. I guess I never talked about this Floyd text that's guiding us. <laughs> he calls himself Michael, but uh, you can guess who he might be. Admit, and here we're gonna do actually a pause buffer long. here, which is kind of funny looking. Kind of Even though we're paused, we're gonna see a text appear on the screen here. Let them go. Yeah, yeah I know. and that just makes her kind of instantly talk. Uh, as opposed yeah. to normally, if you don't do that, you get like a small delay. Okay, so. We're about to enter into a boss fight, we put all this in, the purified crystal is fake and we're captured again in the boss arena. But I'm gonna talk about the shotgun, fast shooting shotgun technique. So basically when you're at one shell, you wanna shoot the shotgun and then reload the shell and shoot again. So basically you shoot, shoot shell at a time and reload after each shot is actually the fastest way. There's like a little bit of unaiming and aiming to make this work correctly to get the fast shooting technique but we're hoping to stun lock this boss basically and uh, hoping kind of manipulate him to do specific actions to just uh, basically act nicely let's see first charge is always consistent one and you can stagger him out the first charge we don't want the second charge didn't happen. It's perfect. And that is the first phase done of the fight already. But, uh, now we just have to wait a little bit for this gate to open. It's gonna spawn two more dudes in. So we're gonna deal with them with the pistol. Because the boss is spawning back in behind us. So we have to be very, very fast and optimal killing these dudes. We don't have a lot of extra time here. We really can't afford using shotgun here either to kill this because we just have the perfect amount of shotgun shells in this run. And here we are trying to line up to do five shots on the weak spot here. I'm gonna freeze because I only got four just yeah. to be safe. Yes. So optimally we would hit the five shots and then we would just crouch and follow up with three shotgun shells. Um, from his charge attack he would normally like miss his first swing and then he could be able to stagger him but yeah just missing the one shot means that you won't be staggering him and it's lower so it's just safer to freeze here we pick yeah. up another uh, we pick up another power up for our power uh, this idle gives one extra use and, uh, we're in the last phase uh, we basically want to stand at the side all the time because this causes a specific sort of stagger which allows us to basically refreeze after each stagger. If you would stagger him from any other direction, he would instantly do this animation where he goes into the ground and then you would have to wait quite a long time. But yeah, that's the fight basically. It's very... We have it basically down to a science at this point and... Uh, the boss really doesn't have too much of a chance. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty tight fight. It's it's probably the hardest one in this run. I mean, there's only two, but I would say that doing the Urias fight like optimally is is probably harder than the final boss. But that was pretty good. Yeah. The only thing was this, the one pistol shot on phase two, but that's not a big deal. It's only like a second and a half or something. Yeah. Very good indeed. So this part right here, uh, lore wise, we're kind of deeper in the Mega Mycetes consciousness now. I think maybe Trey could explain it better. I, I honestly don't don't really know how to explain it. 
I mean, yeah, basically you're just... Michael is telling you to jump from the boss battle and we're entering just deeper to try to find the real crystal in the Mega Mysid's consciousness and the deeper we go, the weirder things get, What's basically. And since this is technically kind of a, like... Uh, the Mega Mysid is a collection of okay. people's and memories, so they like... Things do get Things weird here. Different. This is like the, the Benevia the house, but okay, I personally this found this weird. actually uh, quite a bit more scarier than the main game one, even. Yeah, somehow creepier than the main game one. Yeah. We'll also, uh, see this a is... familiar face here that you saw in the previous run. Yeah. For now, we're just hearing a voice. You might have a guess who it might, the voice might be. Hey, my stuff. Somebody from the previous run. This section uh, plays basically the same as main game, or like it's kind of just an escape room simulator, sort of, where you get your weapons taken away and it's just puzzles. Yeah. And this is this is also if you do like normally speed runs of this, uh, this is where your runs go to die because all these interactions in this area are extremely finicky. And if you do one wrong input, it usually means you lose seven seconds. And seven seconds is basically a dead run at this point because we basically have fifteen seconds in total of time save we can find at this point in the run. So, uh, yeah, and the interaction points are like insanely close to each other here. Um, this first part is like pretty straightforward, but uh, this yeah, is the next part here. The, once we get to the dull tables here in a second, but uh, you might be able to see why runs go to die here. Yeah, also, like, if we normally do this speed runway. Which is technically kind of a bit slower RTA wise. We'd be doing a lot of pause buffer in this section. And, uh, we're, we'll not be doing that, so. But yeah, now we are tasked to play with dolls. We need to find dolls yeah. and use them in the correct tables, I guess. Um, first of all, we get here. So the first, like, I guess, uh, puzzle area, you have need required two dolls, then the next one you need three, and then you need four. The dreaded three so, doll table. Yeah, three doll table is something. The interactions there are just like, you move a pixel to the left and you misinteract. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one's not too bad. Uh, also, something to note here is like the order that I pick up these dolls does matter, and it will matter for the third doll table also, because you want to you want to have your inventory set up uh, in a way that you can just you know mash interact to instantly use the top item whenever you interact with it, so you don't have to really think about inventorying. Because yeah. that that little inventory time can add up if you uh, you don't do it optimally. Yeah, and it runs like. If you mess up an order where you pick up the dolls, usually you're just you have no clue uh, how we're supposed to interact with them, and then you just lose a lot of time. But now we're climbing into down the well. This is where the good stuff happens in the main game, or starts happening. Um, if you saw there, I used uh, my power to turn around there. Uh, it's kind of a small tech because. To your camera is not tied to where Rose is actually looking. Like if you can turn your camera around and Rose will not physically turn. But to pick up items, Rose does have to be somewhat facing the item as well as your camera facing the item. Um, but if you uh, hold space to like use your power, it physically turns Rose uh, as you turn your camera. So you can kind of 180 way faster to pick the thing up and turn back around. Yeah. Here's the famous three doll table where like these interaction points are just very close to each other. So yeah, after I finish this and the story opens, I need to grab these in a certain order and hopefully I don't get trolled by the interactions. Yeah. The interaction on the this one is really weird. 
as you see, it's just not popping up sometimes. I think I got the right order from, though there. Yeah, from like left to right is the order basically. Sometimes you try to pick up the doll from the drawer and it pick up the one on the table and then your order is just completely messed up. And this order just means we can go from left side and just, it's always the first interaction here. So it's just very easy for us this way. You'll notice I'm kind of coming out of the interactions, like not where I started the interactions as well. Oh, nice note. And that's because there is like, there's a little boost you get when you re release W uh, in this DLC. And that boost is kind of carried into when you do interactions. So you can get a boost out of the interaction and it'll put you closer to the next doll that you have to place down. And you can get that table done really fast, optimally. Doing that. I had a weird delay on picking up the phone there. That was weird. Yeah, I don't know why, but like just sometimes you have this like weird delay with this phone. I don't know why it happens, but it's a good way to lose randomly two seconds or something. <laughs> now we're going into the actual creepy part. Creepy casually and creepy as in I could just die if I mess it up. Yeah. So, uh, we are about to be introduced to the the Mia doll and the uh, there are notes which says, don't look. Or like, wait, don't walk. What does it say actually? It's, I think I it tells you, to, tells you to look on the working. Yeah, it to look, right, 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 right. Look. Yeah, yeah. yeah basically these uh, dolls move when you don't look at them. Um, even on hardcore, you can actually just hold W away though. As long as you don't mess up your movement, they shouldn't catch you. Yeah. So the, in here just assuming we just do this very optimally this doll won't catch up and we're just completely fine um, these things are things of nightmare though i just first time playing through this is just horrible here i'm gonna do a little 30 fps to get past this one just so we take yeah. a better line not having to go through the kitchen yeah kitchen you have to like Swirl around a little bit, and yeah, definitely just faster to go like this. But yeah, optimally, we don't even need to look, and we're just barely able to escape this whole sequence. That last all here, and we have to look for a little bit. Away. Then another scary run killer part. Oh, Beneviento is just terrifying in this run when you're on good pace. There's just a lot of very precise things that you lose a lot of time if they go wrong. Yeah, now we're this in the mini row section. And, uh, this sequence is just mostly trying to avoid the detection of these dolls. And occasionally we get to use our power as well. But there is like, we have found a couple of unintended ways of clearing the sclerosia to open up the paths. There's like very perfect, like, very precise spots you need to stand on to interact with these. Uh, this saves a lot of time. It's normally, example here, you'd have to like climb on top of the table, go all the way around, and all that. And it just saves already. I don't know, 20 seconds. That's quite a bit of time, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's pretty tight because the angle that you actually can interact with it is it's it's not pixel perfect, but like it's pr it's pretty tight. And uh, if you take a little bit too long, then that doll will pat over to where you are and detect you. Luckily the doll kind of has weird detection when she's going that way and you can pretty much touch her as long as you're behind her and she won't detect you. So it's not like super super tight but yeah. I've been trying to figure out skip for this section but unfortunately no. Yeah it's pretty hard. Basically there's just these kind of cages here that distract the dolls. Yeah. There's like a little cages. mini rose inside the cages. Yeah. Here I did Here a little checkpoint could... restart. That uh, the checkpoint doesn't save time uh, in itself. My music actually broke. It's really quiet. It's weird. It, the checkpoint in itself doesn't save time, but um, it sets up a doll cycle in the room after this one. That's important. And here's another unintended like angle to clear another sclerosia. Uh, this saves us a bunch of time. Uh, this is where the restart checkpoint comes in. It just allows us to give a good cycle to run here instantly. 
and uh, we have to be very tight with our movement to not get caught by the doll. Uh, coming back, we clear this first one. Uh, this one, this doll here is also on a good cycle because of the restart checkpoint where we, we're gonna get detected here. But she aggroes too late, so we can just restart checkpoint here because there's a convenient checkpoint right behind the corner. I'm gonna restart, okay. just, I'm just gonna freeze her early because she didn't detect yeah. me for some reason. Just do it the safer way. So I'm gonna get here, detected uh, here, but I can try to do the backup. Yeah. So normally if you're super fast, nice. if you're super fast in this section, uh, you're able to actually create that Croatia without even being detected. But we have that backup as Spicy managed to do. Um, if you get detected and you're a bit slow, they can stand between the tables and you actually get the doll stuck in. Like you bait an aggro attack and she gets stuck there. So. And here is kind of a weird thing. If you play this on high FPS, the first time you play this like, run section, you would all pretty much always get caught for some reason. On and hardcore, yeah. Yeah, on hardcore. Because for some reason, this like the doll movement is somewhat tied to frame rate. Uh, so you can either restart the checkpoint, and uh, that makes the doll not be as fast behind you, or uh, you can play this on 30 FPS. Or like 60 FPS to also not get caught, but yeah. Yeah, just opting for the restart there since that's a little bit faster RTA than switching FPS wise. And here is another part that'll be familiar if you've played or watched the main Home game. The, the house from, kind of from the start of the main game. It's just kind of another, another sort of a lore dump a area. It's actually really cool to go through casually and kind of look at all the, the stuff it. from a different perspective, but. We are speedrunning, so... Get back to the she looked like me when she... <laughs> What's that voice? Yeah, there's a painting be uh No, there's a key behind this painting. And uh, we need to open up a drawer to read a note from Ethan, dad of Rose. Uh, and that basically moves us forward. Enough. And again, we are captured. Is this where we first see uh, yeah. Evelyn in this? Yeah. So if you watch the previous run, um, from Zeke before this, you will have seen Evelyn a little bit ago. And Evelyn actually has a way to kill runs in this game too, believe it or not. Luckily, I think we figured out what causes it to stop it from happening. But Zeke was actually the first person to have the run killed by that. Which is hilarious, actually. Very unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, basically Evie has been just kind of messing up everything during this Benavi intersection and talking to us and just... We're gonna have a little bit of a confrontation coming up soon here. So yeah, that part we just went through, we kind of have to blast those three groups of enemies. We've tried to like mess with ways of running by them, but... With the goo there, there's not, not many options other than to blast them. Yeah. And then here we're going into our sort of second boss fight of the run. Kind of, sort of a boss fight. It's kind of just like yeah. a scripted set piece. More than a boss fight, but... It's very intense, okay. There is a little bit of tech to it, speedrun wise. It's not, yeah. it's not like super scripted. You can actually mess it up in those runs too. Yes. By you know I just forgetting waste. to channel the power. Yeah. <laughs> we both done that on world record phases, uh, forgetting to channel the power for some reason. Um, but the yeah. reaction for that thing is so weird. Yeah. So in this fight, normally we need to wait Evelyn to do the first move. But we can speed up her doing her attack animations here by just channeling our power first and then hiding. And every time she does the three blast attack, we're able to counter attack here. So you gonna see us every time. We know where she spawn every time, so we can just channel our ability first and then hide. Because it's just safe. each one of these saves like a second and a half or two seconds. So Oh yeah, I remember when when this 
whole channeling to make her attack faster thing was first found, I was like, oh, that's cool. And I didn't like think much of it because it didn't look huge. And then I did it in a run and saved like 14 seconds. Yeah. It's, and at the time, it was, that's like a lot of time. So it was pretty insane. Indeed. And in this next section, we're gonna have to clear a couple of And we're also gonna trigger an attack from Evelyn. And we're gonna just tank the hit. This actually also lowers our uh, DA. Just, just nicely. We're gonna also take another hit here soon. It's just like perfect amount of lowering the difficulty score. Uh, so we stay just under the right threshold. So we do max damage for the last boss fight of the game. Uh, we take another hit here. This actually also speeds up this uh, Evelyn warping away from this last little channeling. We didn't get in the, into the blasted. Holy moly. Holy. So the EV run ending thing we were talking about there is like, I don't know if you, if you, if you noticed, once it kind of went into the scripted part, it like pulled my mouse to the left. And uh, if you're aiming too far to the left of her, when you start channeling it, it'll actually pull your mouse too far and it'll pull your mouse off of her and uh, she'll just blast you. Yeah. I'm on my own, but I have, and I have to, to deal with uh, Evelyn here. We actually see a little bit of a glimpse who Michael is and uh, yeah, it's Ethan who's kind of guiding us and helping us our journey. Not with see Ethan that coming. It. Yeah, what a big surprise. <laughs> and also this view Where is amazing. Sounds like a very just, cool. Is this it's just place? very cool. Give me such a Bloodborne vibes, but yeah, we're still, uh, well, we're now again deeper, even deeper into the Mega My seat here. Uh, nearing towards the end of the run soon. Yeah, this is pretty much just the walk to the final boss, sort of. Yeah. This part up here, I'm gonna freeze this middle guy, which should give us a pass through here on 30 FPS. These guys have like insanely big hitboxes, even when they're on the ground. But thankfully, you can kind of take a certain line there to push him out of the way a bit to get through him. Yeah. The power of 30 FPS. When in doubt, 30 FPS. Exactly. Up here, I'm basically just going to be uh, praying because there's a very small chance that this enemy will turbo behind me and grab me. Again, this is like one of these weird me like. I've never seen that happen, but hard to happen to other people, and I don't know why it can happen. But yeah, it's it's weird because, like, when it works like that, they're not they're like nowhere even close to you. They're like, so far away. Yeah. So I don't know how one even turbo is hard enough to grab there. This cutscene and this uh, this room, basically that big red thing over there is uh, it's kind of explained that. It's like, it spits out another copy of Rose, and it's pretty much explained that Miranda has been trying to make clones of Rose to make the perfect specimen for her daughter. And uh, yeah, pretty much just a, a big old lore dump room, as Ari likes to do towards the end of the game. Yeah. Uh, I think like, yeah, the issue was like, none of the Roses ever gained powers. They, they showed a little bit of like, I guess, potential, or like, they might have been able to use powers whenever they were like, I guess, stressed. So in the castle part, uh, they were kind of being constantly chased. And that's why there's a lot of like dead roses during the castle part, because we're just trying to get, see if we can somehow evolve one of the rose copies or something, but yeah. Here's the purifying crystal. We grab it, it drains our powers away. And uh, oh no. We were actually baited into the Mega My Seed by uh, Miranda. And, uh, she wanted to get Rose to get rid of her power so she could actually capture Rose again. And yeah, we, we get Ethan to see Ethan. Well. Get to see Ethan face, from a though. third person perspective, which was like really weird to see for the first time. I just yeah. Go and do this. I'm not the face though. Cannot show the face. 
It's really funny. I don't think we'll be able to show the cutscene here, but at the end of the game, they're like yeah. so set on not showing his face that they like do like an emotional shot where his face should be there, but they just like block it with his arm. Yeah, it's like it's the whole really screen silly. is basically just like Ethan Farr blocking both the faces. It's just it's hilarious. But yeah, we're about to head to the last boss fight here. This boss fight is works kind of weird way. There's certain health thresholds which we're gonna try to get her to. And once we can meet those with thresholds, she starts taking less damage. But to bypass that like damage reduction debuff or the buff that the boss has, we use our main power to get rid of it. At the beginning here, we're gonna get her to uh, 14,000 health here. Two shotguns shot and pistol shot. We have to wait for the stagger animation, and then when we use our power, we have to DPS the boss down to 10,000 health. And then we're gonna have to power up again. We cannot power up too early, we have to wait her to be like up and finish her like animation fully. And then we DPS again to 5,000 health. And with the last stun here, we should need to DPS her all the way to down. And this is, again, pretty much down to a science. There's no way to really speed this up. Yeah, it's like a semi-scripted boss fight, sort of, kind of. So you can only really kill her in a certain amount of phases, and there's no way to kill her any phases faster than this in hardcore with the damage you do. Yeah. The only, like, scary thing, like, now, now we're in the scripted part, you're going to take these hits and... Then you're gonna get uh, one more power up and you're gonna finish the fight and then run with it. But yeah, sometimes the shotgun just likes to do like 100 damage instead of 500 or 600. Oh yeah, we didn't really explain earlier, you might have been able to see even during the boss fights, but Rose actually just doesn't know how to aim a gun. And the shotgun and the pistol are both really inaccurate, so you have to make sure you stun close so that you get full damage, you don't get screwed over by the spread. We're about to be done with the run here. I'm yeah. be coming up soon. All time. In three, two, one, time. GG. GG. That was Resident Evil Village Shadows of Rose on Hardcore. A um, couple shout outs. Uh, I guess I want to give uh, the tool makers for this game uh, are really cool people. Squirrelies and Salad, I think, were the two that did the main work on the tools. Uh, th those are really what let us optimize the time down to what it is so we could, you know, understand the boss fights and understand this Miranda fight because it works so weird. Um, the routers of the game, like, uh, Trey, um, thank you, good, thank you for doing commentary as well, and, uh, Zeke also, Salad, Nico, all the boys that, that, uh, we routed this game with. And, uh, thank you to Ek and GDQ for having me on. Um, anything you want to say, Trey? No, good, it's just a really good run. Well done. Not this time. Thank you. And uh, also, uh, I think Ek mentioned it before, but I so did get this into AGDQ 2023. So I'll be running the same category there. Uh, yeah, try to catch that if you can. Thank you, guys. All right. As well, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch or anywhere else, where can they find you? Uh, it's just twitch.tv slash spicy TV. All right. Thank you again for showing off the Shadows of Rose DLC. It's really interesting to see a game like this get routed so quickly and so optimized so fast. Uh, hearing that's only like 15 seconds of leeway right now is kind of wild considering this came out like a month ago. Yeah, it's pretty insane yeah. how consistent it's gotten. But it also makes sense given the uh, the RE community and how the how they all run games. So very proud of you. No. All right, we do have one more game for y'all tonight. Don't you go anywhere. We're going to be right back very quick. Stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs. Do what you generally need to do. We will be right back. All right, everyone. Welcome back from the break. Hope you enjoyed that run of Shadows of Rose. And a very emotional DLC that really, I guess, hammers on the themes of RE7. Uh, that being said, we do have one more run for you tonight. One of my personal favorite games and just a great time in general. Uh, we're going to be uh, ending tonight's show with a run of Dead Rising 2 Time Skip New Game featuring Sweetola. So take it away. Alright, cool. Hey, right. hi everyone. My name is Sweetola. This is Dead Rising 2 Time Skip New Game. And it's a. If you've seen X uh, Dead Rising 1 Time Skip run, it's like that, but it's for the second game in the Dead Rising franchise. 
So, right here, again, saves. We're going to start from a fresh save file because it's a new game. So, there's a timer where it counts down, so it's easy to kind of start the whole run. So, anyway, we got the protagonist called Chuck Green. He's got a daughter called Katie. And the whole point of this game is that he's got to get drug money to help keep his daughter from turning into a zombie. And it's all explained in the prequel game, uh, Dead Rising 2K0. So, after this cutscene, there's going to be a timer. As soon as it hits zero, it's time to start. So, it's time to start. So this is the TAR section of Dead Rising 2. It's kind of introduced in the beginning because it's just a fun little uh, thing to do at the start of the run. And also it's the online aspect of this game. Back when it launched, TAR was a way for players to earn money. So you would compete in the game shows with different game modes and things like that. And overall it was like quite fun and interesting. Had its own unique unlocks, like outfits, like the TAR outfit on. But uh, people who are new to what time skip is, uh, time skip is basically a mod that removes all the waiting involved within Dead Rising. Because if you play Dead Rising at all, you know that the game has large amounts of waiting. This game in particular has hour-long waiting sections, and they can be removed a bit by simply just using the movie theater, and that can obviously avoid waiting and all that fun stuff. And yeah overall waiting for an hour is not the best and it's just not a good time so at the end of tar we want to try and win that little game mode or game show in new game plus we can just completely just say nah I'm not gonna do that because we don't need to but the reason why we need to is we want to get as much pp as possible so we can get leveled up because this run is surprisingly difficult because of the random RNG aspects of this game. So one of them being that we are not able to control what level ups we get at certain levels. And that's not very good. Anyway, we're going to go find Katie, but instead what we're going to do is we're going to go say hi to a zombie and make some friends. So we're going to start this nice crowd of zombies and we're currently going to basically fail the prologue, which is quite odd because you'll think that you would want to pass this. Turns out it's actually faster to just die in the prologue and the game just goes, hey, you don't have to die here. And then just skips you forward to the safe room without saving Katie, which saves about, I think, like 10 seconds or so on New Game. I could be wrong, but. It it's is a lot of time. This one. Yeah. Obviously, it's Katie telling us to wake up and we're not going to wake up. So. Uh, I mean, we are going to wake up. We're going to again carry her to the safe room, and then we're going to see all the survivors here. So we got Sullivan and everyone else here who's here for a good time. And there's Stacy, and there you go. So right here, we are now going to go get KT some Zombrex. So basically, the story behind KT and how she got infected is her Chuck's mother, well, Chuck's wife and Katie's mother end up getting infected with, uh, by got infected, bit Katie, and then over time. Katie needs Zombrex, so basically it's just a drug that prevents you from turning to a zombie in, I think, like 24 hours. Originally it was like 12 hours for the uh, prologue game to this, which was case zero. And right now we're just going to be going off to go to a pharmacy to go grab the Zombrex, so... What's up? But if you notice as well, to tell that time skip is actually working, you can see that Fine K Zombrex is actually already in the red, but this would not be in the red before it starts. It's kind of a good little indication to say that this uh, mod is running, and well, not running, it's more like just you got the right file connected, because this game runs off a custom uh, file compared to an executable. And anyway, I'm going to try and skateboard through these zombies, and skateboarding in this game is very, very bad. It's like skateboarding on butter, and the butter is currently stale and doesn't really slide well. It's just not a good time. Like, pretty sure Ek can contest to how bad skateboarding is in this game. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Uh, as well, uh, for the skateboarding, the wise kind of the looters here, just doing headshots, but for the skateboarding, uh, you're going to see on the way back as well, uh, Swede's going to be not pumping the gas the whole time. Uh, you may notice uh, he's often, like, skating on the skate, accelerating, let's go with that. Um, but he's actually going to slow down to take tighter turns. Uh, the reason why is by acceleration, it makes your hitbox wider. 
by slowing down, you're actually going to be able to just not do that. Uh, as well, I'm pretty sure this is a safety strat that's going to allow him to get the faster run speed while not having to possibly break his board. I mean, instead I'm just going to go escape for all through zombies here, but, you know, that's eight bucks as well. Huh. Giant to Pokesoul, uh, the bad guy who fights a lot of stuff. Turns out, if you grab a wheelchair, cart, or anything like that, you can just ram it into a wall or drop it, and you can just escape all through all the zombies, making it so that you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> I love that glitch, and now I'm going to run this game again. <laughs> Pokey's just great at finding stuff. He was like, yeah, it's that. So hopefully you like that. But originally, yeah, you would basically need to avoid all the zombies. And granted, you have to drop your pistol, but you only really need it for that beginning section anyway. So anyway, we're going to go and give Katie the Zombrex because she needs her drugs. So we're going to go give Katie Zombrex. And yeah, so... In case about to start occurring this next time, I'm going to continue playing here because I go through. Um, I'm currently doing it on my end to skip the cutscenes a bit faster. So what I kind of find out interesting is, even though I'm using a controller, um, the game is still somewhat allowing keyboard inputs. And turns out if you hold enter and press escape or tap escape, you can skip cutscenes relatively at ease within Dead Rising 2. But there's a chance that you can open the pause menu, but you can probably you can rebind the pause menu on Gable to not have it show. Um, here's the combo weapons. We are not going to go make them because it's not the best weapon in the game. There is a really overpowered weapon which is really helpful for one of the bosses in this game. Uh, sadly, we'll be showing it off just yet, but yeah, I'm just going to go skateboard through to. Uh, find out the truth because recently Chuck Green has now been accused of uh, letting loose the zombies within the mall, even though we know he did do it. But again, people see it on the news and just go, yeah. And that's just people. They just go, oh, this guy's Chuck Green. He's got the outfit, does it? Blow up. And even though Chuck wasn't there. So now Chuck's trying to clear his name and become a hero. Kind of like Frank. So we're going to a hotel uh, to meet a reporter. And I'm going to try my best to avoid the zombies here because I want to try and keep my boards alive. I just hit a zombie since I said that. That is uh, very good. Also, one thing I'm also doing is to get off my board slightly quicker. I'm pressing double tap and up on my D-pad. What this does is cancel the animation. So it's basically a quick way to get off the board. Uh, so for me right now, I'm just pressing... Uh, uh, up on D-pad to exit off my board, which is slightly faster than not doing that at all. So, do that. And then I'm just going to cross the pipe and just make sure the zombie's out of, is the, out of our backer's way. That's the, what's what I say, Isabella? Oh. So I'm going to talk to Rebecca and then we're going to make our way on the highway. That's pretty bad. That's bad, oh well. Right now, we're just going to leave Rebecca again and just go on ahead. Uh, so, right now, we're just going to be skateboarding on ahead to the next zone. But what we're going to do is what I like to do is try and farm kills here because we kind of can. And it's nice to get a bit of XP, but also I need to showcase the best advertisement in this entire game, which is Oodles. Oodles has many good things in life. They have things for your dogs, such as doggy chairs, doggy toys, and doggy dress clothes. As you can see, that dog is looking very fine. He has a top hat, he has a bow tie, and he has a nice little shirt. And that dog also has a bib and a high chair, which look how cute these dogs are. They're cool. You can anyway, them. yeah, it's the small things. Anyway, we go back to killing zombies. Uh, that's again. I don't know why. I just think I saw that once while doing a run. And I just remembered like how goofy the little thing is there. And it's just like, ah. Yeah. See, killing zombies is a lot smarter, especially since I'm pretty sure that also helps Isabel run through them in a way. Yep. And normally I just, uh, I do the uh, change Chuck Green's clothes into underwear. Oh, you can still do that. Yeah, there's underwear beside oh, definitely. that. I would have gone done that, but I was like, I kind of just don't really want to put them underwear. Considering that A is just like 
It's more of a thing where it's like every other run is like you just do that. Also, my board's gonna break here, which is fine. It happens. Usually, you end up losing the boards at some point anyway. But what I'm gonna do now is just skateboard through here and just wait. So, uh, we're gonna wait for Rebecca to go towards this pillar. So, she's gonna rerun this corner, suddenly stop, run towards us, and if it gets towards the pillar, we're just gonna open the door. Uh, right um, now is also a good time to mention that uh, earlier Swede grabbed the book. Uh, that book is gonna multiply his skateboard power by times three. Uh, normally Boris have four health, now he has 12. Uh, this is gonna be the max of the game until Swede does something special later. Yes, because come back to this run, uh, people who usually run it are me and Agdysis. I've kind of rerouted the ending to this game to a little fun strat, which is just, it's great, because the sad thing is, it kind of really only works for a uh, new game. Also, did I call those super jump there, which is nice. And now a little bit of a tricky part, because I gotta do some parkour, and this game can eat your inputs and completely throw you off before you fall these lights, but we should be fine here. Also, if anyone can guess the Easter egg on Chuck's uh, outfit, uh, you know, there's an Easter egg there, so people can like speculate what is that uh, thing on the. What's the name on the back of his shirt mean? Oh, jacket. Not shirt. Sure. Also, there's Gordon and the Schwanzer. We're not going to bother them, and Denise is going to be running towards us. And my board is. Eh, it should be fine. Yeah, also first run, we notice that we're not rescuing survivors. It's because they end up causing a cutscene with Sullivan, and also there's a bit of like time where survivors are thanking you, like, saying, oh, thank you for saving me. It was really cool that you did that. Oh my god. And it's like, it's a cool thing. I don't want to... That cutscene. Bye. Anyway, we figured out that TK's up to something, and now we're going to chase after him. So we're going to go on our very way and become this, you know, find the truth and ask DK, hey, why did you frame me? Not very nice. And yeah. Uh, another thing to bring up right now as well is uh, considering we're going to this mission, uh, they're going to get harder and harder. And you may notice, uh, Sweet is currently level one. While we did farm some experience, we're about half a bar up to level two. Uh, this will be a lot of problems with the level up system and what that means, uh, but it also means that the upcoming mission is going to be immensely difficult depending on how it is played, so uh, hopefully there'll be a safety save. There will. I'm not that... I've learned from my mistakes, okay? I know it's all we talked about before you did the run. I was like, hey, make these saves in particular. These are the ones you gotta make. There's one in particular. It's the one coming up, but... I think I mentioned it previously, uh, but again, I'm very tired. It's like five, almost six o'clock in the morning for me at the moment, because, you know, UK time and stuff. But right now, uh, when it comes to Dead Rising 2, the level system is completely random for what we get. Unlike Dead Rising 1, uh, where we know we're going to get stock up and guarantee that level, like, you know, four, or like, we guarantee that between level four and eight, like, in that middle range, we know we're guaranteed a stock up and life up, and moves. Uh, Dead Rising 2 just goes, yeah, here's a level up report, it's completely random, enjoy. So we can go for the entirety of the game without having an extra stock. And that's happened to me before, and it was just not very pleasant. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do here again is grab this, wheelch grab this wheelchair and then just yeet it. And there we go. Also, the thing about these glitches, if I get grabbed by a zombie, I lose my current state. If I enter a vehicle like a push there or something like that, it loses the state again. This also works with quick steps as well, so you can run through the zombies as well, but kind of defeats the point of it. But... We're gonna call that ghost boarding. Eh, just zombie clipping sounds better. Or ghost boarding. Aww. One or two. It all works. I mean, you can ask Pokey, he's the one who figured it. Anyway, here's Snowflake and Ted. We're gonna just leave them because Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. Very bad, very bad, not good. Also, I try to make graphics to OTR there, because Trent goes, as soon as he enters Snowflake, is Tiger, Tiger, Tiger! Oh, no, this game might be input. Ah, uh, okay. Ted, please, though. Snowflake, I'm gonna climb up again. You can't catch me. 
But yeah, we need this LMG. It's very useful. Uh. Oh. That's fine. Does Snowflake get you in midair? Uh, I think so. Oh, hang on. Oh, yep, nope. All right, thank God you made that. <laughs> DL2, DL2. Was, Basically, I was about DL2. To say, about to say. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. No, nothing to worry about. Uh, suspense. Uh, totally not shaking right now. <laughs> All right, okay. I'm going to take a bit of time to find food. Uh, OJ's right in front of the door. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's in the episode. I actually get to help with this run. It's not just me yeah. watching a run. I don't know. <laughs> oh no, that's what I'm like happy about because like I don't. I think there's food here. I know it's a safe one here, and we're gonna yeah, say. Just don't jump down the stairs. Just they, they, they take the I long walk. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, there's also the save right here. I like to make. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's right in front of the bathroom. Oh yeah, it's over there. Saving. Although there's this trance I could be thinking about uh, off the record. <laughs> oh, oh, just right there. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, you can uh, just cut right, they won't shoot you. Ah, nice. A little bit of refreshment. After getting mauled by a tiger. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, no, that's gonna be a theme, by the way. I've never had that one with Snowflake because it's game at my input, but it's very sad. Anyway, here's CK. He's on the train. I'm not gonna chase him. Now, if we get lucky, we could go on the earliest cycle, which is the one around the right, but this game can bug out and make it so that you don't actually uh, can hit it because they'll hit you and lose all your speed, which is not very good. What we're going to do here, hopefully, oh, I got it, it's fine. I'm going to do this. You just do that. Perfect. You jump over, hit the second one, and that's the optimal one. And now we're going to kill the guards. Now, uh, I'm going to tap fire these guards because uh, save bullets. And uh, so in Dead Rising 2 here while Swede's going across this for one, this section you could skateboard across, it is definitely not safer and you might want to level up, we got health, which isn't bad, it's actually a decent upgrade just because it might make the next section safer. Uh, but the pulse firing, the tap firing is very important uh, for a few reasons. One, uh, Dead Rising 2 doesn't really let you have uncapped damage, uh, there's, I think there's very tiny Amounts yeah, of like, like, hey, if you hold it too long, it, your damage will be capped. So pulse firing one does more damage as a result of doing less damage, and also just hitting like a charged five controlled shots to the head will end up just doing more than uncontrolled shooting. Plus, you can serve more ammo. And again, just doing no glitch here, just because it's relatively new. It's not really rooted in, but it's just more or less. I have one skateboard. And I want to try and keep it alive until I can get a fresh slot at the next mission. Which, there will be another safety save because this next part, Run For The Money, at level 2, is not very pleasant. But, you know, this game is quite weird because, again, this whole section is just really, really, like, annoying. Oh, that's nice. Also, you can't skateboard upstairs, so Chuck Green, not as good as Frank. I'm going to be honest, he's not as good as Frank. Because Frank can skateboard upstairs. And on water. I think Chuck can as well, but... And there is the protester, and we're just going to leave him and skateboard out. Now I'm going to avoid the zombies, because sadly I don't have the glitch here. Oh, there's a wheelchair there, actually. Uh, that should be fine. So uh, Run for the Money is going to be the next mission that we're talking about. And the idea behind this is uh, TK's goons are now going to be raiding all of the Vegas vaults. Uh, so you have to go to every vault and kind of destroy the drill and also take care of his goons. Uh, we don't have to really take care of the goons, but you have to take care of the goons because otherwise they'll take care of you uh, while you try mm -hmm. to take care of the vaults. Uh, there's going to be yeah. some unfortunate bugs that can happen. Um, 
pretty much uh, good luck. Uh, I guess show uh, sweet good luck here. Uh, just because sometimes the vaults don't take damage. Sometimes they do. It's kind of just what the game wants you to do. It's really, really weird. Yeah, basically how it doesn't take damage is the hitbox for the drills gets really small. And it's in a particular spot and it's just like, oh, also, if you press X here, you can skateboard technically and hear the skateboarding sound, which is quite dumb. Anyway, okay, more drugs, and usually between these sections we would have like hour long waiting. Oh, wrong button. I thought it was like a safe prompt there. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is go to this restroom that is conveniently placed, I'm going to save because uh, run for the money. Uh, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, as well, uh, while health isn't the worst upgrade you can have, it's definitely not one of the good ones, because normally the ones you normally want are one of two. You either want stock, because the more stock you have, the better it is, or you want ranged attack, actually, because that's just going to make your gun stronger, which is nice. Yep. Uh, basically, one of those two just is super beneficial towards the run, mainly for the fact that it's just nicer to have. Uh, but we're not going to get fresh boards now. We're going to go get them in a moment because we're going to be heading back. Oh, uh, you're supposed to say, no, but take the stand with us. Why not? The game at my input. I'm going to take this with us because... Yeah. So it's been mentioned as well, but uh, in terms of the uh, eating of the input, uh, Dead Rising 2 is kind of weird where the game really uh, assumes the lightest taps mean something. Um, this quite often leads to runners accidentally jumping off things, picking things up uh, among doors because it's counting one interaction over another, and it's quite unfortunate. Uh, also, uh, things with Dead Rising 2 base, uh, the Merc guns only have 30 ammo instead of 16 off the record, um, no checkpoints, so if you die, you only get that save. And right now, you can see the bug we were talking about. Um, the drill is not taking any damage from the gun, unless you move to a specific spot, uh, which, um, if that happens, just beat it up. Yeah, so that time is like the best thing to use for the drills. Uh, we're gonna grab some coffee, heal up, because every section here, I'm gonna try and heal. But, yeah, we've got, we got a play of Blitzen, actually. Uh, as well, you may have noticed that Swede was not actually using the LMG in this section. While he does have it, he doesn't want to use it just yet because he wants it for the next round of combat. Um, since it has 50 bullets right now, it's going to be better for a large intro fight, while using guns in the interim is going to be nice as you continue the fight just because, you know, 50 is larger than 30. It, it just makes sense. Yes. It's one of those things where it's you kind of get used to, like... It's one of those weird things where if I had my three slots, like an extra inventory up, I would grab a second uh, uh, assault rifle. But because I'm only having limited to four, I kind of want to keep the LMG here. So it's just that. Also, I'm just casually trying to avoid zombies, even though I could be a bit more reckless. The boards need to last me up until the end of this case and a bit after that. So it's kind of a I need them alive situation. But also, I need to make sure that before I enter the Yucatan Casino, I actually lose my LMG because the game only wants to spawn about one LMG in per section. So we're going to try our best to avoid some zombies here. I'm going to quickly uh, cop off here. I'm going to shoot the zombies as well as the guards because uh, basically how my old run died when I did this at uh, UKSM, I ended up basically getting grabbed by a zombie who like, complete tunnel vision me, so it's like, I'm not very positive. Uh, a couple more things to add on really quick. Uh, for one, we have really good shots here. You can see we're getting max damage on the drill. Uh, two, um, the phenomenon Swede is mentioning is known as turboing. Also, did you heal up full health? Uh, yeah, I think I did full health. It works out. Um, but yeah, zombies in Dead Rising do have a mechanic like many other um, Capcom games, uh, which is zombie turboing. Uh, Resident Evil features this in uh, many of the games. Uh, what will happen is sometimes a zombie will instinctively want to go for you, they'll start running faster, and they'll directly yeah. beeline uh, in your path to try to grab you. Just uh, let a zombie ahead there. Really bad. Yes. There's only just back there. That's like turbo wing. And it's really annoying, especially that section there, because... Um, basically because... Uh, I think I'm right wording for it now. Because that zombie decided to become best friends with me then, it's been annoying, so. 
Uh, one oh. more thing to mention, you may know Swede is dismounting in some strange places. They're not actually strange. Uh, the reason why is because if he gets shot off the board, Chuck will instinctively get back on the board despite him getting knocked off the board. Uh, meaning yeah. you can actually get trapped in perpetual, hey, I'm on the board, I'm not on the board. Uh, as so well, then, I believe right now he's making a quick step. Yeah, this is more of a safety thing. You kind of run in their guns akimbo, but having a quick step is very useful here, especially this little section here. But what I'm going to do is make a second one and use it at the end of this quick step to kind of get through this little area faster because, again, I want to keep my board alive. And it's more overall just a little bit of a safety strap end of the day. And safety is better than trying to go fast. Especially for, like, uh, doing this. It's nice. Yes. Uh, so a few things to talk about as well right now. Uh, the quick step became a huge part of the route in recent times. Uh, the idea is uh, having a skateboard that only takes four hits is pretty bad, even if you go up to 12. Uh, as well, uh, throughout uh, various uh, category runs of both of the games, uh, we found out that one of the magazines actually doubles the amount of juice boost, which is how you, the quick step buff. Whenever you drink it, you get a buff for about, I think it's like a minute, one, one minute yeah. or so. One minute, uh, and then so it doubles. Yeah, juice boost would make that two minutes. So instead of having to worry about the immediate breaking of the boards, instead what we do now is we use the uh, juice boost later on uh, to just keep that the whole time and we're actually going to phase off of skateboarding and be going to juicing the whole time. Um, it's an interesting strat, uh, especially for this game. Uh, it makes it a lot safer as well. Um, it's also funny to just watch Chuck run really fast, but the big thing is that this is why stocks would be so important. While other upgrades are nice, having more quick steps to be made is going to save more time in the long run, because you essentially get two minutes off of every every section. And since all the upgrades are randomized, in theory, if you leveled up five times in a row, you can get stock every time. Incredibly lucky if you did it, you're not going to get it. Yeah. And you can... Uh, you can go through the entirety of the game without uh, worrying about leveling up with stock, but for speedrun wise, having stock is a lot nicer. Also, I realized my health, and I'm gonna find food before this section. I think there's food in here. I don't want to use my quick step. Uh, it's money in that. Okay. Uh, da, 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 food, 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 food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Golden grill, golden grill, golden grill, golden grill. I think there's a guard in there, by the way, so be careful about him. Oh, I know this one. I'm thinking the other one. OTR, yeah, I think OTR does. No, I was thinking of the, uh, the, um, it's like the casino with the Hummer in it. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 that's the one just behind. Yeah. But yeah, grab some health there, because I don't want to die. Uh, this section can be quite risky. The, I believe the strap that gets used is, oops, this is one key. Ah, also, there you go, Psycho Health, because I got shot. Um, we're gonna go to this side here where the sign is, and this is kind of a safety little net by here. So we're gonna uh, aim for this strat. Oh, it's just safer. Um, there are two strats that can be done. Uh, this one's nice, much safer. You'll get the annoying stun every now and again, but it's really not a bad one. Uh, there is a very yellow strat though, which uh, you go right up next to the van, you take out one of the guards, and then you're gonna be able to just shoot it point blank. Uh, it's slightly faster, but even then, maybe not, depending on how you get the shots here, just because, in theory, you could just keep wailing on it uh, without getting the hits. And realistically, yeah. distance isn't going to matter for a gun. Yeah. Uh, that's quite good. That's quite clean. I'm going to make a safe gun here, because, again, I, if I die, I kind of have a backup to where it's not completely torture. So, right now, we're just going to go back to Yucatan because we're going to meet up with Rebecca because she's found a lead for us and this lead will be very helpful and supportive and totally isn't a trap. Right, Ek? Definitely. Nice. But also, right now, I'm going to be ditching skateboarding because we're going to have a caffeine-filled fun adventure by going to a tiki bar. Uh... There we I go. Yep, I just had my brain just kind of fast. Like, do I need skateboard? No, I don't. So I'm gonna drink the quick step now because it's gonna last us enough here to where we're gonna be able to run through. <clears throat> and this is gonna determine if I'm lucky or really unlucky. So if I'm lucky, then I'll have a stock up at the end of this mission. If I'm unlucky, then I won't get a stock up and I'll be sad. 
which is not very good. Again, also, the reason why I dropped the LMG here is just because uh, the LMG will respawn. If I already have it in my inventory, the game will be like, nope. And we'll spawn it. So, before the queen twins fight here, so if I say queens fight, there's twins, uh, gonna be making a few quick steps here, so... Uh, Do you know if quick step, uh, like, tops off if you decide to drink one while you have one active? Yeah, it tops off. You add some. Cool. Um, as well, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to get enough in our reserves to have two, but also we're going to make three uh, just so we can have uh, one to drink while we make the last one, and then we'll have that in the inventory. Uh, there you go. Also, if you want to know, I threw one there and I explain it now. Because the game doesn't deload the area, that quick step will be available after the fight. So if I get quick step or I get my uh, level up, then I have stock up. I have that quick step there. So I just gotta run through that area and just re grab the quick step. So I like that. That, it's one of those kind of backup things for making quick step because there's like a set amount of quick steps. I believe it's like six or seven needed for the end part of the run. Anyway, here's the twins. Uh, we always kill Amber because she's the first one we see. And we're just going to, again, burst fire her down. You can just fall also her, but we're going to move forward to try and bait her attack. And we're going to try and move in a way so Crystal doesn't come towards us and we don't get completely killed by Crystal. A uh, few things mentioned here as well. Uh, while we are going faster than the uh, TK's goons, there's still a slight amount of pumping as you see in the shot. It's not just holding it down because we're not on bullets. Uh, as yeah. well, quick step is highly needed here because we're level two and don't have a movement speed buff. Uh, the twins are immensely fast, so um, having quick yeah. step here is pretty necessary. <coughs> and also, let's see how much how lucky we get. Um, we get saving because safety. <laughs> yes, we got stuck. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I believe that was two level ups off that. I don't know what the other upgrade was. Oh, new skull move. You got. Yeah. What did you get? <laughs> Uh, I have stock 5 and I'll tell me now. But right now, we're running back for here because if you remember, we. Drop, drop. Ah, that's alright. If you notice here, there's my quick set from earlier. And now, this one, the first quick set I drank from in there, should last me about till the escalator in. Uh. the area just up ahead. So, but what I'm going to do is, I think it's a propane tank I can grab off a zombie, I think. Yeah. I don't know if I'll have to even do it, though. Uh, hooks up's pretty nice at the, uh... That's the oh. Yep. Yeah. It worked out. Yep. This should last up until the end by here, but again, just doing that little glitch. I'm just still kind of a root in part for it, where it's like guessing where to put in a root. Uh, also, I'm gonna use this and drink. I'm gonna say in this case it's a nice showcase, but uh, one of the upsides of Quick Step that you may have noticed earlier uh, when Sweet was running to the Twins fight, um, there's a very minor trick that you can do. Uh, works in a lot of Dead Rising games, and it's a bit awkward. Um, but when you start weaving slightly left and right, you can scoot through zombies slightly faster. Um, doing that's really the trade-off of do you want to kind of run through them and clip through the zombies, zombie clipping, or do you want to try and just do the minor amount of movement. Uh, as well, I believe Sweet is going to be grabbing a gun that is going to help us out later for a very special fight. Yep. Uh, also, I realized I need my LMG. Ah, it's fine. Uh, uh, you can get the pistol in the uh, hotel. Yeah. Hotel, or I can get from Skateboard Shop. Which was the original route for this, because originally yeah. we would have to route in all these skateboarding. Also, there's Double D's uh, van there, or the old truck for mail. And yeah, uh, the voice actor for Double D voices the male person in this game, which is super cool. I like that Light Yagami voices uh, Slappy. Yeah. Also, it's uh, asked in Twitch chat, but stock is just the uh, amount of inventory you can carry. On new game, it's immensely important because more items means more power. It is especially the thing that's going to carry you forward. Yeah. Also, I did say earlier about the Easter egg. Uh, if anyone hasn't guessed it, it's the original creator of Dead Rising's name. Uh, uh, Come his name, Kijay Nafune. Yeah. I probably butchered. That's his name. It's if you read it backwards, it's uh, Kijay. So a little, nice little Easter egg. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, I'm gonna save the game here. Away. I mean, look, it's been like a couple minutes. I don't know how long <laughs> since then, but it yeah. It all works out. Yeah, it all works out in the end. So, I'm hoping now that the current quick step I have, it should last me up until the boss fight for this next section. If not, I've got to drink a quick step in my reserve. But basic right now is I need to try and time. I'm an idiot, by the way. Uh, da, 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 I'm an yeah, idiot. You're a hotel roof. roof. Yeah. You can, I, it's one of those things where it, you would think that you would go there before the start, but you do before the mission. I'm just an That's idiot. That's because uh, uh, off the record also kind of messes with the muscle memory if you play that all recently. To be fair, I have. I've, so, well, eh, I've replayed it casually. Because I was just bored, I was just playing it on my Xbox. I was like, I replay OTR. And then I was just so, doing that, um, different. To explain to anyone who doesn't know the differences, uh, OTR off the record mm. is a kind of like a remake or an alternate version of this game where you play as Frank. But uh, they also kind of yeah. change the order of some of the cases. So in this one, you have to go to the roof. In the other one, you would end up going, I think like you just go to the barbecue or something. I think so. I can't remember too much about it, but I know with OTR, it it's kind of... It. Yeah, it changes some stuff at the game, like... There's an actual psychopath. Uh, okay, that's trying to. I need to like plan something in my head for this now because I need to work out quick steps. I think I drink quick step now. That'll last me up till the thing, and then I can grab the. Okay, no, no, okay, okay, we should be fine. You can uh, make them uh, on the way to Boykin. Yeah, I was gonna say I can make like a few onto Boykin. Because I, sh to be fair as well, that would have actually run out anyways. So I would need to make them at Boykin. So. Yep. Um, it's going to be kind of interesting as well because Quick Step's only made off of really for speedrunners going to be using either wine based ones or coffee creamer based ones. Um, yeah. For Boykin, it's going to be coffee creamer ones or it's coffee creamer and o OJ, which also you. Um, and then earlier you saw Swedish so uh, combining wine and beer. I, I think there's a name for that. I don't know the exact name, but it's something you can do. Wine. Oh, it's wine. <laughs> Wine. It doesn't make you faster, I'll tell you that much. It uh, probably has the inverse result if I had to guess. <laughs> Got wine or... Ween. <laughs> exactly. Uh, also, I blame my mistake on Tideless because... Uh, Warden. You woke Even up at like 6 a.m. local. Also, uh, here are the snipers that are introduced. Uh, they're actually not going to really be a factor. We have Big Earl. Um, he is the only one who might shoot us. It's very rare. Please, uh, big girl, do not shoot me. This run may have already, I've already got mauled by a tiger to 1 HP, but please don't shoot me. Ah, no zombie, leave me alone, please. Thank you. Uh, as well, we haven't talked about it yet, but we grabbed a special gun that's going to help with uh, probably one of the hardest boss fights uh, in the game. Uh, we're not going to tell you what it does yet. It's something that no, you really just want to see for yourself. It's not the hardest no, boss fight. I think like. Normally, it would be up there, I'd say. Oh, right. I can't. How can I get the true hardest boss we'll see later yes. in this game? That's right. How can I forget? There we go. Uh, once all of these guys are dead, we actually don't have to worry about the last guy. He'll spawn, but we can just actually touch the elevator button and then we're good. All right, here's the very difficult helicopter boss fight. You have to shoot down TK's helicopter. Uh, it's going to try ramming into you. You're going to have to hit it a lot. And uh, wait, what's he doing? He's using a toy spitball gun. And oh my god, it's dying immediately. Wait, what happened? Oh. So, neat fact about Dead Rising 2 in this fight. Um, this fight doesn't want you to be totally screwed, so what happens is throwable objects do a lot of damage. Uh, you get spotlights, so you can throw them into the chopper and it'll do a good amount. I think it's supposed to be like every, like, a fifth of its health or yeah. something off of a throwable. Basically, what ends up happening is, is that in that fight, you'll chuck some stuff at it, you'll press a button, you'll lower it down, and it's meant to be quite a tedious fight. Uh, but basically, what ends up happening was... I remember one day, and this was just me getting bored watching YouTube. I was watching a outside Xbox video, and they were messing with dumb ways to defeat bosses. And they mentioned that, and then I was like, that's pretty cool. But at the same time, I was developing the Timescape mod for Dead Rising 2. So then during testing, I was testing, I was like, let's see if this actually works. And fair enough, it worked, and it's just like, it's been a part of the run ever since. Which is super cool. 
It should also be mentioned that this works with any toy weapon in the game. Uh, Dead Rising 2 base, uh, the one we're playing right now, uses the toy spitball gun just because it's conveniently placed. Um, Dead Rising 2 off the record actually adds a new gun called the Toy Ray Gun, which has more ammo, fires faster, and does more damage, weirdly enough. Um, so it's kind of funny that the same fight is just easier and off the record because you have a better gun for it because they just added a new toy gun, which... Yeah. Yeah. Also, we got stock again, so that is amazing. That's right really there. good. Yeah. Um, that's insane. Do you know where all the coffee creamers are? Uh, there's one besides there's somebody in front of me. So. Uh, one in. I think there's one in the cafe here. Uh, there's gonna be one in the uh, or two in the cafe, I should say. Wait, there's three. Oh God, I didn't know there's three. Yes. Huh. Well, you only need three anyway, unless you want to grab the OJ here, and then you can take. Like, I mean, I can. There you go. Because I can make. Oh. I mean, I only make three, but I think I called on to oh, this no, one just. Uh, an OJ at the uh, newspaper shack. Yeah, it's like OJ's there. So I'm going to try and get there as best I can. Uh. But yeah, there's also some. By the way, I just remember now when my brain was like slowly getting to grips of like trying to think of differences between this run and New Game Plus. New Game Plus, we use an interesting glitch where we completely go into the void. And unlike Dead Rising 1's void, where that would just hard lock the game after you drop to a particular coordinate, uh, Dead Rising 2 will basically set you to point zero. So the devs knew that players would fall out of the bounds somehow. And so they just put a safety fix in there. So right now, what I'm going to be doing is making some more quick steps on the way to Boykin. Uh, we're going to make them a Pebble Grill. And we're going to try not to get hit by gas zombie uh we're gonna try and make as many hit quick steps here as i can there's like three here so oh no don't whiskey uh like... that's who uh now what i'm gonna do is Go up top here and I'm gonna grab a shotgun. There's like a constant guaranteed shotgun spawn up here. I'm gonna try and stay control myself there because I don't want to fall off and take damage, even though I took some damage there. Uh, right now we're gonna go into Boykin. The I think original route before I think I uh, started going to the Purple Grill there to get the quick steps and stuff. Uh, the original route was to uh Oh, it's on my head. The original route was to just simply go to Yucatan, grab the LMG, and use that for the Boykin fight. But then you go to Pubble Grill, then you're able to Pubble Grill, make the quick steps, grab the shotgun, and use that. Uh, it's funny enough as well, we actually grab, uh, the shotgun grab now is just safer. There is another shotgun you can grab off a zombie, but the thing is that zombies are surrounded by gas zombies, and they are terrible because they stun you and then grab you, and then you are in terrible, terrible situation. Uh, anyway, right now is the boy can fight. Uh, we're a Dark Souls boss. What does that mean? He's going to do a lot of dodge rolling, and uh, Swede's going to be playing with distance here. Uh, quick steps to be fast enough to run, so Swede wants to be in that sweet spot where Boykin wants to approach us, but he also wants to roll away from us. Uh, the idea behind this is if he stays in range mode... Oh, this is perfect. Uh, if he stays in range mode, uh, that's going to make it so he's going to keep firing at us. However, if he gets in melee mode, he'll keep rolling out of the way. So this way, it's kind of just right in that juicy center, and then we're good to go. And then he keeps the assault rifle because we're going to need that for uh, the next boss and uh, some of the upcoming soldiers that go along with that. Yeah. I also want to point out, if Boykin grabbed me once there, and I mean just once, that is it. That is pretty much like, okay, we're dead. Because Boykin does a lot of damage. Because Boykin, obviously, at level 8, you're not meant to be here. So a lot of people, if you play for Dead Rising, you know you save survivors, kill psychopaths, do some things on the mall or around the you know Las Vegas Strip and stuff like that. You would do those little activities. But obviously we're speedrunners, we don't want to do that. Unless we're doing the categories like all missions and stuff. Also, I've got to be kind of careful with this. Um, I'm thinking if I can get to this section here, we should be fine. Yeah, we're good here. Uh, basically... If you're wondering, why don't we just run Rebecca with quick step? It's actually... Oh my god, what am I stuck on? Oh god, a little kid's bike! <laughs> that was almost killed. That's killed it. Okay, I need to probably quick step at some point. Unless I can... 
take very little damage. Yes. Please, zombies, don't don't let me blow up the truck. Please don't let me blow up the truck. Please don't let me blow up the truck. Ah! So, uh, interesting routing addition here as well. You can see that we're carrying Rebecca and the juice was in handy. Um, we have a mission that for a while was just slightly slower, but with the inclusion of juice boost, it's actually going to allow us to go much faster here. Um, this is going to carry over, as we said, two minutes each time you use it, and that's going to be enough to actually let the quick step last inside of the safe house. Uh, having that means you can move, you know, at max speed, even in the safe house. I know that sounds simple because there's a few I said, but oh. normally with old movement route, it would be skateboarding. You can't skateboard in the skate house. Uh, it's not the skate house, it's the uh, safe house. Yeah. I'm pretty sure in old routing, we did have quick step for it because it was just like, well, you're going to make quick step, you just have it in the inventory, but you would just have skateboarding. And then you would just drink the quick step in the safe room, which would be a minute, which would be enough time to grab all the items we're going to need for this next section. Also, there's a fun little thing with this next section. And I'm going to point it out to you because it's really weird that the devs did this. Uh, you know what I said, we did it save survivors. I have technically lied. We have actually done a mission, and we did it super quick, but you wouldn't have noticed it. Uh, don't worry, you know. Also, I'm not saving here because I kind of don't need to save for this little section, because it is like, not as like a, ah, it's more like, ah. So there's, there's a survivor in here that shouldn't be here. Um, however, uh, they're in this area, so again, survive from the start. So yeah, another survive from the start here, and we're gonna grab this barrel because we're gonna need this barrel for to stop the zombies from entering. So basically, what ends up happening is is that someone uh, end up opening or allowing the zombies to enter the safe room. So this defense is broke, which is like very just very mean of them. That's just toxic. Also. Hi Tara, the worker's companion survivor who we never saved. For some reason you're here. I, I don't know why, she's just there. They wanted to make sure, they, they assumed you would do it. Assuming is the floor. Wait, my question is though, why was it like, if you kill them before enter this area, will the game still spawn spawner back in? I think if any of the survivors die, well, actually, you're asking if the survivor dies and they come back. You know, I don't know, actually. I don't think we've ever tried killing, like, Terry there uh, before bringing her. Oh. I thought like, getting bugged down. I was like, no. Please don't be a use. Don't be a thing that I can't control. Nah, that's fine. OTR has a point where it softlocks the game here. So what ends up happening is that uh, found by Deeps, where you will ultimately just... Limit your computer's CPU core count, or the game's only read off one CPU core. So, that will undo the soft lock. Anyway, we're going to then save here because, again, safety saves are good. Especially for showcasing this off, because this game could still completely kill me. I could still die. Its runs could still be terrible. Anyway, uh, gonna get down to here and then gonna drink my quick step. Now, okay, so I got, yeah, but okay, cool. All right, I got an idea. I need two, I need three more quick steps now, and that's all I need. So, again, we're gonna go grab the coffee creamers and OJ to make the. What type of quick step would you call that, Eck? Like a coffee creamer and OJ. I would call it vile. That's what I'd call that. It's it's, it's disgusting. Uh, It'd be cruel, okay. wouldn't it? I mean, true, but it's just oh, like. Yeah, also, um, since you have the inventory, if you want to make a fresh resin for the game, uh, new Sam would have an extra one. You can have four coffee creamers. You can make four quick steps. Uh, you don't need three. All right. Why do you? Well, I'm second like guessing myself. God damn it, Eck. I was like, I don't need three. You might need it. I mean, in theory, if you needed the fourth one, you can make it right up right before the final boss. Yeah, true. I think it, you can also assume it's an orange Julius or a creamsicle. 
creamsicle. <laughs> I, that's what I saw on Twitch chat. It says right there. Uh, it, it works. It works. I mean, uh, Twitch chat is a very creative amount of people. Let's be honest. Very creative. People. It's better than wine. <laughs> Leave wine alone. <laughs> You know, it's maybe maybe name. I try wine soon. I'm curious. Does really make you faster? <laughs> it's the fastest way to feel sick. I'll tell you. That much. Oh, you have to put it in a blender. So I'm learning. Yeah, it's the blender that really does the work. Yeah, no, it's the thing, though, right? You have to put the full thing in the blender. You can't just like it with the glass and everything. Yes. Yeah, hundred percent. Like you can't just you got to put the glass in, and you've also got and to put the cork. The, yeah, that's all gonna be blended. Like, uh. Just like, uh, will that blend? And that's just the question you're going to ask that. Will it blend? Shout out to very early YouTube for that great channel, which I'm pretty sure still uploads this day. That like, how, how would it blend? All right. So now we're actually going to be entering the next boss fight, quote unquote, area. Uh, we're going to hey. be dealing with some soldiers first, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see the surprise boss. Uh, let's just say that uh, Capcom really liked the twin boss fights a lot, so they put in another one. Yeah, these guys are very, very difficult bosses coming up. They are like, it's a. Uh, that's why I had made safety safe because these bosses are something else. Like they're very difficult to deal with. Um, my quick stops running out, so drink this now, and this will last me up until the end of this section and the part after. So we're gonna go talk to this keypad. All right, so going through this, there's going to be uh, two groups of soldiers here. Uh, group one is just uh, gunners. Uh, group two is a little bit weirder, where they have a... I think it's like a puke gun, quote-unquote. Yeah, it's basically a gun that's designed to kill the gas zombies, because, you know, it's the government. They figured out how to How kill long them. has that staircase been there? Uh, Since the game launched. Why? Oh, my God. Also, here's the hardest boss fight in the game. Is ah, the scientist. Up. See, I almost died, so that, that's, that's the... Ah, man, that was a hard boss fight. You know, that's like... Hey, they can unironically kill your run if you're not careful. They also have the like best ability of stun locking you for some reason. Yeah, because it's both people there. And the game doesn't give you iframes, it gives them iframes. <laughs> so it's like, ah. Nice. Thanks, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kakon on Vancouver. Thank you. Uh, right now, uh, we're also going to be going over to the uh, the gun shop because we're going to be getting our final boss weapons. Um, the final boss is not going to be easy. Uh, the reason why is we're level 9. Uh, the game wants you to be like probably level 30-ish at this point. They want you to be a higher level. Um, it's supposed to be kind of a fisticuffs, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, hand hand-to-hand combat. Um, but we're not going to do that. Uh, we'll be showing you what we'll be doing when we get there. Uh, but just understand it has something to do with the sniper rifles. Yeah. Um, the original strat for this back when this cargo was just getting kind of rooted was to make a painkiller and then we would just sit the this little area in the back we would just sit at and we would just snipe from there and work for it. But then Ectosis uh, ended up saying, hey, there's a cheese spot you can use right by here. And I was like, oh. And then we started using it. It's kind of the great thing when it comes to like speedrunning this sort of game. Also, look down, the shop is uh, not very uh, PG. Uh, run through. So yeah, uh, you can you can use your imagination for that shop there. I'm gonna just use your imagination. What is that shop used for? It's a it's a wine shop. Yes, it's for the wine lovers. <laughs> so I'm gonna run through, and I'm keeping. I'm always got kind of looking at the quick step to see if I need to drink it sooner. I don't need to, but in my mind I'm like I need to drink this, but I don't. So. Weird. I'm just going to say, I'm pretty sure I'm going to grind this next week, and I'm going to be using that skateboard tech and the uh, the spot where I didn't know you, you... I never knew there were stairs! The fact that I'm a second behind your world record and you <laughs> didn't know there were stairs. Ack. I never know that! Ack. Whenever I watch you all do this run, I never watch the scientist part! Oh, man. Ack. <laughs> Come on down, bro. 
Like you did this to Texan back in like 2020 when you just said you yeeted the bulls in mini golf. Oh yeah, it, it's funny because I have absolute caveman <laughs> strats. That's a fair thing. Uh, for previous speedruns and viewers, uh, we had on Dead Rising 4 mini golf a while, like uh, I think like a couple years Christmas, ago. Christmas, Christmas 2020. Christmas. We had Frank Rising yep. and uh, we had Frank Rising and mini golf. From yeah, my, and my favorite part was um, uh, the runner uh, Texan Red Wolf was describing. Oh yeah, for Dead Rising Mini Golf, uh, we have this amazing strat where uh, we plan these shots. And he was like, "Wait, you plan your shots?" And then <laughs> they realized that soul. I've just you been just uh, sending every ball I've ever hit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we're coming to close to the final boss of this run, and. Uh, one thing I'm just going to say, it's kind of more of a personal thing, because it's that time of year again, it's almost Christmas, and obviously one thing I want to say, and know it's a lot, well, we're seeing a lot of things on Twitter, because follow like Overwatch people, you see a lot of mental health people and say they need to take breaks and stuff, so if you are feeling down, or upset, or anything of the sort this time of year, reach out to people. There are great people who are willing to talk to you, and listen to you, and things like that. I'm pretty sure, you know, I can contest, but mental health shit being kind of a, uh... Big issue with a lot of people, and people who do stuff with it, as myself, back in 2020 or so, 2021, uh, went through it, and it's not fun. And if you bother, like, reach out to people, they are there, but you can reach out to your friends, family, uh, your neighbor's cat, you know, all those great people. So that's one thing I just want to say. And that's kind of like a cliche thing to say, like, oh, mental health, yeah, and cheers. go for it. You should you go do it. And it's, uh, and I, it's weird, but it's like one of those weird things where... It's end of the run, it's all people who kind of need to. But also if you know that your friend or someone like that is going for it, uh, just reach out, say hi, say how the day is. Off to the play, something with them, even if it's League of Legends. I have stopped playing League for six months, I've been clean. Proud of you, Ek. I wish I was sitting by me in Overwatch, but uh, that, that game is still with me. But I do understand the sentiment as well, be good people. It is, it is good stuff. Uh, as well, we are hitting our, uh, what's the word? Um, you do have enough quick steps, luckily, uh, and we're going to be seeing really what we're doing for everything coming up right now. Yeah. Uh, I got stuck by zombie. Oh, no. Um, so the final boss is going to be on the Yucatan rooftop. Um, normally, you would actually make a quick step right beforehand, and then you would hope it would last, but with the inclusion of juice boosting, uh, that's going to allow us to uh, just kind of breeze through the zombies, actually, and we can make it all the way to the end. Um, sometimes having an extra health here is okay, but luckily to put food around the arena, it's usually not too mean. Um, the Rising yeah. games are nice enough to kind of give you resources on the finales these days. Uh, the original game didn't give you anything, you were just kind of a SOL. Uh, but with this game, they give you a good amount to, like, hey, you're low on health, there's sushi on, like, a table around here. And as well, the quick steps, just unless uh, breeze with these zombies. We're not actually going to need it when we enter the boss fight, but it'll be nice for getting the location. Uh, location is going to be a little platform on the left. And we're just going to be uh, hitting the very tip of his head. While also avoiding the damage from him. Uh, ideally, we're going to want him to be shooting the yeah, plywood. Yeah, platform. Yeah. Uh, the only oh, there we go. Uh, the main awkward part is that zombies can have stray hits, but also um, with the quick step, it can kind of mess up how we move. So hopefully we get the sweet spot. Looks very good. Yeah, um, good Sullivan's just gonna mock us, and then sweet should be good. Time comes up on death. Hopefully his, not ours. That's fine. Also with the sniper rifle, you take a bit of knockback every time you go back, so it's kind of like. Gotta try and determine it, but I've got him in the loop here, and this is good. So. You can use one sniper rifle to kill him, which I'm gonna try and do, because again, Sullivan has iframes. Just so you know, give every single enemy in this game iframes, because that's what you do. And time. GG. With a bullet to spare, nice. That's quite quick. Yeah, normally on over that uh, 19, provided you did it right, and looks like you did. And then we get to watch the ending. Chuck Green has saved Thanksgiving. Yes. Oh yeah, it's Thanksgiving They're... for you got everyone in America today, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's why I like having on non-American runners for today's episode sometimes. <laughs> Although they well, too are American, you... but... Yeah. People travel. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah, uh, while we are uh, watching the ending cuts in here, uh, Swede, if anyone wanted to find you, and uh, where can they find you, and do you have any like shout-outs or anything you'd like to say? 
Yep, I stream occasionally, or now and again, about the best I can on twitch.tv forward slash sweetola. I also have a YouTube where I post a lot of my runs and highlights and stuff like that from speedruns of Dead Rising. So, again, it's just sweetola. Or you can just go to src forward slash sweet and go from there to look at stuff. But overall, big shout out to everyone in the Dead Rising speedrunning community. Expartial shout outs to Texan, Guy Who Lied, Street Back Guy, uh, Ek. Six and a bunch of other people, it's like trying to mess all people off the top of my head, but it's a lot of this awesome people in Dead Rising community who've done awesome things for the past like two done. years or so. It's been insane to see so many like great people come by, spear on the game, and that overall, like not just DR2 in general, it's like people who find OTR, who did that in, people who did all the other stuff, and make DR1, 3, 4, everyone who came is just really great. So. Yeah, good, uh, good stuff. Uh, also, uh, in terms of, we don't actually know how uh, Sweet did here on the run. Uh, we normally use an in-game timer for runs, and unless he had his splits open in the uh, I background, did not. I yeah, did not. We, I, I would have just panicked too much if I had them open, so I just left them uh, off. Let's see. I can give you a rough estimate of what you likely would have had. Uh, I have no idea. Let's What's see. What's the Current time or well, end time? Uh, it's about fifty-seven, fifty-nine. You probably had like a, about a fifty-ish, maybe. Uh, I can probably look back at my split straight. Look back at my own splits or previous ones. Yeah. See that. It's, that's like a decent run. Like sub an hour is really good, yeah. considering that I almost died to Snowflake and then I almost died to Boykin and almost died to nearly every boss so far in the game. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Well, now I want to run Dead Rising 2 again, but running Dead Rising 1 and not to go back to the... I don't want to go back to this game yet, I want to Dead Rising 1. <laughs> run Dead Rising 1, don't go to Dead Rising 2! And if I run Dead Rising 2, I can get a new record. Eck, you already have records. <laughs> I want a new one! <laughs> That's like a child. <laughs> well, I mean, it's only one second diff. Ah, true. Also, it's TK. Yep, oh yeah, TK's here, he's giving us a nice pug. Also, this is the canon ending. That's why this is the speedrun category. Believe it or not, this is canon. It's uh, it's one of two canon endings because there's this one and then there's the overtime ending. But the thing is, overtime is not canon because uh, Case West uh, follows this. Look, I like to believe it's canon. Oh. <laughs> but yes. Um, uh, that was Dead Rising 2. Uh, if you have not checked him out, uh, Sweet Ola does a lot of various games, uh, including games across the Dead Rising franchise. Uh, definitely check uh, more of him out on, uh, well, there's a Twitch link in chat at the very least. Um, but yes, uh, thank you very much for the run of Dead Rising 2. Uh, once again, Sweet. Yeah, thanks for having me, Nick. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, that about wraps up our show for the night. Uh, we had three fun runs for you. We had the RE7 Madhouse, which was uh, pretty pretty wild to watch uh, with how seamless that run went. Uh, we had the Shadows of Rose, a breaking new uh, horror uh, RE horror game speedrun coming out. And then one of my personal favorites of Dead Rising 2, a true family game as well. And apparently a game I learned that there's a bunch of brand new tech in that uh, I need to start doing. It's so. not brand new, it's old. Apart from it, the it's thing, new the to me. I didn't know about that crashing. I'm just gonna say <laughs> the crash is new. The stairs aren't. They're old. No, I know the stairs are. The stairs are in there. It was programmed. But yes, thank you all for watching, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, Speedrun from the Crypt will be back in two weeks. Uh, we do this about every two weeks. It is a fun horror show uh, brought to you by GDQ. Uh, I've been your host, Dicus. Personally, I do a lot of my own horror speedruns as well. You can find me somewhere down here. Where I talk a lot about the show and various other stuff with that as well. And I'm pretty much there everywhere. Uh, anyway, I do want to say once again, thank you all for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you are celebrating it. If not, I hope you just have a wonderful day in general. All right. Have a good night, everyone.